everybody, how's it going? Welcome. This is uh, our session zero of sorts. By now, you all know that we have returned to the Weird West and that we will be playing around with Nightlingers traveling Carnival of the Extraordinary. But uh, at this point, you don't know that. And uh, we're enjoying kind of holding that over your heads uh, a little <laughs> bit. It's really, it's really fun to watch you guys try and figure all this out. It is January 2017, so we really did this ahead of time. <laughs> way, hedgehog way early. Ordinary, guys. It's an ordinary hedgehog. It is. That's it's what's an, going on. About, it's an as ordinary hedgehog. To Sonic. <laughs> um, but uh, welcome. My name is Jordan Caves Calloran. I am the GM here on Wild Cards, and I'm excited to be returning to the title of Mark as we go back into the Weird West. And uh, let's meet everyone else real quick before we jump into what we're doing. So one at a time, just introduce yourselves, your characters, and then what is your character's first childhood memory? <laughs> no, uh, no. Just kidding. Just tell us who you are. Okay. Uh, my name's Dom Zook. Nailed it. Uh, my name is Megan Caves. Also correct. <gasps> I'm Jordan Pridgen. Hi, I'm Grav Galati. Well done, everybody. Uh, I thought we were going to have a combo breaker, but we did it. Um, so this is not going to be a full session zero in the sense of what you might do when you're about to start a home game. Uh, there's a lot of things that have to go on behind the scenes when we're starting a new campaign on Saving Throw for wild cards. But essentially, this is just going to be sort of a behind the scenes look at the character creation process for the new campaign. Um, and uh, it is it is here so that if you've never seen Savage Worlds characters being built before, this is an example of how it works. If you have and you just want to see what other groups do with it, this is an example for that too. Or if you're not interested in this at all, then just skip it. That's totally fine. It is not it is not mandatory for your enjoyment of our campaign. But before we get into that stuff, I actually do have two uh, two little items of like world information that I want to get you all's uh, input on. Um, so the first thing. The first thing is I wanted to get everyone's feedback on whether or not we add a new setting rule to the table for this campaign. Ooh, setting rules. Yeah, Suede has introduced a lot of new setting rules um, and many of them we haven't really played around with, but are you all familiar with the creative combat setting rule? Yes, I don't remember exactly what it does. Okay, so I'm not. this one I is looked actually- at it as a possibility in- For Castlevania? Castlevania, yeah. Yeah, this this one is really cool. Um, so uh, the way this works, it changes the way tests work a little bit. Um, a successful test in combat works as normal, but if you succeed with a raise on your test in combat, you roll 2d6 and then you get the result on the creative combat chart instead of uh, shaking the person in addition to making them distracted or vulnerable. So... Uh, the reason I'm asking for your feedback on this is because it's anytime a wild card character succeeds on a test with a raise in combat. So that would be all of you, but it would also be any of my enemy wild cards that succeeded. Well, could, could, can we know what's on that list? Absolutely. I will tell you now. It's on um, page 137 if you wanted to see the PDF. It oh, is right. on I page my 137. Book. I had it out and I just put it away. Sorry. No worries. I will start going through it while you grab those books. Page 137 in your suede book, at least the editions we have. Um, mm -hmm. So creative combat, 2d6 result. Um, so on a two, second wind. The foe's reaction gives your hero hope or allows her to catch her breath. She may remove a level of fatigue or a wound, her choice. Mm. If she wow. doesn't have fatigue or wounds, the enemy is shaken instead. On three, inspiration. Fate favors the bold. The clever hero receives a benny. Uh, four to five is double whammy. The target is both distracted and vulnerable, otherwise known as the the incorrect way we were playing <laughs> tests for a long time. Uh -huh. right. <laughs> On a six to an eight, which is the most average result of uh, 2d6, the foe is just shaken, which works like it normally does. Um, nine to 10 is a setback. The target suffers a setback of some sort. She might fall off a ledge, lose the confidence of her minions who then desert her take a rash but foolish action, or simply lose her next action as she attempts to recover from whatever situation she finds herself in. On a roll of an 11, insight, the hero has new insight into the target's nature. Once during this encounter, she may add a d6 to any trait roll made to directly attack, affect, or damage that same foe. If rolled a second time in the same encounter, the foe is shaken instead. And then my personal favorite, a result of 12, seize the moment. 
After the hero resolves this turn, she immediately gets an entire additional turn. This includes uh -huh. movement as well. She may use the turn to go on hold if she wishes. So um, most of the time, the 2d6 result is just going to end up with the foe being shaken just like they normally would be. But on those other results, uh, some really interesting things can throw a wrinkle into uh, combat. Now, this adds more things to keep track of during combat, but it also adds a lot more opportunities for fun, um, interesting things happening during combat as a result of tests, which sort of makes their utility a bit more powerful. What do you guys think about uh, using creative combat in the, the new campaign? The third, if you roll three, the person who is doing it gets the Benny, right? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. just double checking. Um, I mean, I think it sounds cool. Yeah. Why not try it? I, I'm I'm quite for it. I, I think it could be a cool way to do things, and and I, I think the what what I would wonder about is like do you feel like it's going to be an undue burden on you if we are like testing often to like come up with i don't think so um really the only difficult one um the, the only one that requires work for me as a gm is, like as far as one? is uh is the setback one actually oh um because insight like you know uh that's that's sort oh, of the, the window dressing for it thing i see yeah but setback um actually could be a lot of fun for me to play with. I honestly think it sounds it sounds like fun, but if uh, if you guys think it does too, we'll just, we'll add it in. Uh, I'm, try yeah. it, and then yeah. if we decide we all hate it, we can always get rid of it later. Yeah. We can always I, do that. I'm, I'm in that boat because I'm kind of torn on this be, because, so two reasons. One is that this makes things easier for us. Th there's no downside to doing this. There is a downside yeah. to doing this. Uh, actually, and the downside is that my wild cards can have these effects on you guys too. So if I am running uh, a fight against you, the enemy could potentially get a whole nother turn after their turn. Sure, but but we 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 roll way more. We there were four wild wild cards, wild cards versus one maybe two. Mm -hmm. So it's going to affect us a lot more. But it does make tests better, which I think this this the tests are kind of like they're okay, but this makes them a little more spicy and you maybe want to get edges that improve tests because of this. Yeah. So, so I'm a little torn because like now Snake Eyes on this actually isn't bad. Snake Eyes is actually a pretty good result on this. I, 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 would, also, I would also point out that I think, yeah, we feel like we, we've done a lot of roles and tests and stuff, but like since we figured out the, the how tests actually work instead of the vulnerable and shaken thing, like I've been paying more attention to like if we've been testing and getting people shaken, and we we get a raise on test far less often than I think might be obvious, and it's because it's an opposed roll, and we both have like both sides have the power to like reroll things and like try and oppose it and stuff like that. Uh, wait. Also, also uh, from my time playing Hero Clicks, uh, the two d six roll uh, <laughs> is a is a massively weighted bell curve towards the six to eight range. Um, mm -hmm. So most of the time, your raise is just going to be shaking them as per usual. Um, this just rules. What happens on a crit fail? No, the, nothing. There is no. Oh, there's no okay, crit fail on this. It's it's a table result. Like um, I got confused. Oh, I thought I did something. Okay. What's up? Second wind is a crit fail. There's no crit fail, but right. It's just, uh, but snake two. eyes. Sna yeah, yeah. You, second wind. You get a benefit instead of yeah. Yeah. Two, exactly. Two and twelve Always are good. the least likely rolls to be made on right. a two d six roll. So this those... is this is just a craps table for tests, which is great. I love craps. So. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> I, we wouldn't have been affected he does love by craps. Thank you. We wouldn't have been affected by a crit fail there anyway, right? I, I'm just trying to get it clear in my head. I like mean, on it, tables, it's a whole new roll. Yeah. This is not a roll that we normally would have had. Yeah, like, so you, this this is already assuming that we've made a raise on a test, right? Against yeah. somebody. So this this table only gets so you, rolled on if you if you uh, right. get a raise on a test, and there's no way to crit fail a table result essentially. Right. So it yeah, the, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm just trying to get clear on it. Yeah, totally. So let's give it a try, and then um, if everyone hates it, we'll drop it. But I, I think it could be a lot of fun. But if Jeskarov hates it, we keep going. We keep going, yeah. It's got to be a plurality. <laughs> That's um, fair. The other thing I would like to bring up for you guys and see how you feel about it. I personally, this is just me, I hate bookkeeping um, in RPGs. There's plenty of bookkeeping that you have to do, uh, and I don't like adding in additional bookkeeping. So... I am actually very interested in using the alternative wealth rules in uh, Savage Worlds Adventure Edition instead of keeping track of your individual money. 
This essentially adds a new skill uh, to everybody. You don't have to put points into, but you have a wealth skill. Uh, and on average, you start out with a D6 in it. When you lose money, your die type goes down. When you gain money, your die type goes up. And then uh, there's all of these different situations. It, it, it gets a bit more specific, but it's it's kind of like a, a way to add uh, a, an um, abstract tracking of wealth to things. Um, and also some risk reward when it comes to making your rolls. Like if you succeed with a raise, you actually don't lose any money when you purchase something. But if mm -hmm. you crit fail, you go broke. Uh, you can also have other people help support your wealth roll uh, with their wealth, but then they face the same consequences that you do depending on how the roll um, goes. It sounds, it sounds interesting and it sounds like a way to not have to track uh, individual monies at the table, which I'm always for. What do you guys think about it? Yeah, I hate tracking wealth and, and mm -hmm. encumbrance and things like that. So I'm all, I'm all for it. My my thoughts are I, I mean, did we track wealth in in our first Deadlands campaign? Yes, kind of. technically. Bit, yeah. But there wasn't the only time you really um in in our campaign the only time you guys really spent any significant amount of money in single bursts was when you ordered from Smith and Robards. Yeah. Um, most of the time we didn't track it, which is what this system allows as well. Essentially, it's like if it's just a small mundane purchase, you just buy it. Like sure. uh, only only if you go broke are you unable to afford like the the mundane uh, necessities. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with whatever. I I I feel like even in like ETU where money is like more of a a real baked in like actual thing of the system, we barely use money anyway. That's just it's, like not our style. It's not my. It's not something I keep top of mind as a GM, and I think that trickles down uh, to to the way that they the game is played at the table. I this one will take a little getting used to, but I was reading through it today, and I actually think um, it could be pretty cool. So it sounds have... like it's more role playing based approach to money, which is a big plus in my mind. So. Essentially, yeah. Any cool. major reservations against trying the new wealth system? No. Okay, and in fact, um, looking through uh, the Deadlands uh, PDF today, there is at least one edge that specifically utilizes the new wealth system. So like, you know, there's that. Sure. Mm. Cool. All right, cool. So we'll be playing with creative combat and we'll be trying some alternative wealth. So let's jump into the crux of things. Um, I would like to hear from each of you guys, uh, if you have, I, before this, we, we briefly met to talk, uh, to brainstorm a few character concepts. Uh, at that point, each of you had two character concepts loosely that you were juggling between. Um, I've talked to a couple of you since then very briefly about stuff, but I just want to check in with everyone and see what character concept are you currently, uh, leaning most heavily towards? Cat <laughs> And when did you grow that tail? Uh, I am leaning closer to my uh, singing cowboy. Singing cowboy. Okay, awesome. I, yeah. I like that. I like that concept. Yeah. Uh, I want to play my, uh, I want to be a witch and I'm probably going to go with the Romanian uh, royalty uh, background because okay. it just seems fun. So uh, now is a good point to let everyone watching know that we do have access to a, uh, a pre-release version of the Deadlands Companion, which was unlocked as part of the Kickstarter and offers up new rules uh, and new arcane backgrounds, one of which is uh, black magic or witchcraft. Um, so this stuff may change uh, from what you see in the video to the actual release of the Companion, but uh, we wanted to kind of get an idea of what the direction of it was uh, for character creation and Pinnacle was gracious enough to provide us with that copy. So thank you very much. Um, so which, all right. But one day I'm going to play Chi Master again because that was also really cool. <laughs> it was cool. I, li I liked your Chi Master. Yeah. You got to punch a cow to death. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, uh, JP or Gruff? I am, I, so I, I'm, I'm still pretty on the line with both of my characters. I'm I'd say I'm mildly leaning towards my my like toy maker uh, animatronics guy. Idea. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I do like that one. I think there's a lot of fun uh, potential with that. But we'll we'll get to that in a little bit. I I, I will say Garav, 
um, had some different ideas, but we spoke last night and kind of accidentally together stumbled upon a, a concept that I got super excited about, but I want to know <laughs> if it was, if it is one that stuck with you, Gaurav, that you want to uh, continue with, or if you decided to back away from it and go a different direction. Well, so w which idea are we talking about? The, the, the voodoo idea or the clown yeah, idea? Well, the both. Okay. Uh, so uh, my first idea, or this wasn't my first idea. I had a metal mage idea as well, which is still on the table, I think. Uh, but I wanted to, I looked at the, the companion guide and there is uh, the rules for playing someone who does voodoo. And uh, it it is really cool. It's really cool. And uh, mm. JCC and me were talking about reflavoring it to uh, a different uh, a different way of working. Uh, not Not exactly like how it works, but basically where the power comes from for the voodoo person. Um, and my other idea was uh, to play like, if anybody's played Doomtown, uh, the Fourth Ring Circus, or uh, Fourth Ring, is that what they're called? Circus? Fourth Ring Circus? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, fourth Ring Circus has uh, like killer clowns that are, like, that are like hucksters. And I thought that would be also very, very cool uh, because uh, I, I played that, I played that faction uh, when I was playing Doomtown. I just really fell in love with the, the flavor of it all. So, uh, playing something like a sort of creepy, maybe not creepy, but like starting out as just like a clown that is kind of weird, or maybe even combining the idea of the clown and voodoo somehow. That was the thing that I liked a lot when yeah. we were talking about basically um, not making it voodoo, but sort of reskinning some of the voodoo stuff and reworking it a little bit so that you are a clown who is essentially um, accessing these sort of er clowns or or like uh these <laughs> carnival these carnival spirits that you oh let God. possess your body in order to uh accomplish things which i thought was kind of a dope idea yeah i've um, got a comic i have to send you <laughs> okay please do <laughs> called whistles which is like uh it's it's got weird clown magic and clowns is like an almost elemental force of being <laughs> Yeah, I really um, like that idea. Or if you um, ever played Kingdom of Loathing, there's a whole um, oh, er yes. <laughs> area called the Fun House where you're trying to fight Beelzebobo, the clown lord. Uh, and <laughs> you, meet, you meet lots of interesting clowns there. I, I actually think that this is a, like, I got really excited about that concept because I just kind of want to go through and reskin uh, some of this stuff and come up with creepy clown spirits for you to worship. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, that, was, that was one thing that we talked about. So you're kind of, you're in the, on the fence about that between metal, metal mage and that, or between, is the one you're yeah. leaning towards? So I want to see what kind of fits better with the crew that we have, like whatever characters you guys decide. Would a clown make sense to be journeying with you, or would it be better to have someone a little more, not, not like down to earth, like a clown obviously belongs in a circus, but I think flavor wise, if we can match whatever works best would well, be good too. Let's talk a little bit about how this is going to be playing out. So as part of the carnival, um, you all are going to be characters, ideally, unless anyone has a really strong reason not to be, who have been a part of Nightlinger's Traveling Carnival for a little while now. So like you all sort of like would know each other and, and be intrinsic parts of the carnival. Not all of you have to be performers, but those of you that are performers, that's just one of the jobs that you do. You all have like multiple jobs that you would be taking care of around the carnival. In addition to that, you would more than likely be from time to time dispatched by Nightlinger as sniffers who would be uh, looking into uh, rumors and, uh, and hearsay about items or, or people who are unique or special that Nightlinger is wanting to add to his collection. Um, so each of your special, special abilities and skills um, would have multiple purposes, both in the work you do at the carnival, but also in the work that you do for Nightlinger sort of off the books. Um, so that's something to be thinking about as well there. Um, so I actually think from the sounds of it, we've got a pretty interesting group beginning to develop. And it sounds like, I know uh, JP and Gaurav, you've got two concepts that you're that you're sort of still waffling a little bit between yeah so why don't we start with either uh megan or dom and we'll go through the process since you guys have more fully sort of zeroed in on one character type um uh, we're going to do everyone in in turn essentially we're going to go through the whole process for everybody but we're all going to be involved in, in uh in the work of doing it yes que well, question the reason i keep looking down is because my cat has decided to just Aww. sit Aww. on my lap, but it's also just <laughs> stuffing her face into my belly because she doesn't want to see anything. <laughs> All right, so, okay, uh, yeah. 
cats, yeah. you know, that's how they go. They do that. Yeah. They hate seeing things. Sorry. Yeah. So I'm just going to roll randomly um, for okay. uh, Megan or Dom, and we'll we'll start with whoever. So Megan, you are one and two. Dom, you're three and four. Dom Zook, we Ooh. are starting with you. Did you ace? Oh. I did ace, but so, it's, okay. I'm, I'm rolling on a table. So okay. uh, no crit fails, no oh, aces. Oh, okay. No ah. aces. So... Um, okay, we are going to be looking at putting together uh, Dom's singing cowboy concept. So um, before we do that, Dom, tell us a little bit more about how you envision this character. So if you've seen uh, Carnival, uh, the HBO show, my, um, I, had, I have two basic um, uh, uh, inspirations for this character. One is Jonesy, the character of Jonesy from Carnival, who is the um, ex, he's an ex baseball player, was a star pitcher, and uh, he um, got, he refused to throw a game for the mob, sorry, spoiler alert, and um, <laughs> uh, ended up um, hurting his leg and he uh eventually through many many trials and tribulations eventually ended up in this traveling carnival and he became sort of the uh leader of the roustabouts and stuff and um sort of basically the the right hand man of the carnival like owner guy um and uh also like the classic like Tom Mix, uh, you know, Gene Autry, those, the classic singing cowboy motifs. So it was a combination of the, of the two basically. Um, and he has sort of dual personalities similar to those two characters where he is the, the jovial, uh, you know, uh, guy playing the guitar um, and, and has, has that, uh outgoing personality and everyone tends to like him that's why they you know he can sort of be kind of the the go-to problem solver but also he uh unlike jonesy his um failing basically is he started developing a um an issue in his hands and he used to be the trick shot uh of the carnival and he started developing tremors and uh, some sort of neurological disorder that prevented him from shooting straight. And uh, he accidentally shot a audience member, which caused Ooh. him to be pulled out of rotation essentially, but being- Gen Generally not a favorable thing to do. Yeah, didn't, I don't, I don't really. think they, he ended up killing them necessarily but maybe uh i haven't quite determined how far that went but um he yeah pulled out of rotation and uh since he can't shoot uh or at least he doesn't do trick shots anymore because he because of that he's decided to keep his hand sort of occupied playing guitar and um it just sort of keeps him moving and that helps sort of keep the uh um, his muscles from atrophying and stuff like that, but uh, sometimes it catches up with him, and uh, he he uh, he has issues with that. So he's kind of struggling with with a little bit of um, uh, shame and and uh, uh, history there, but he otherwise is a pretty happy go lucky dude. Okay. Interesting. This, this, um, so a couple things stand out. Uh, it, it seems like the, actually the Aelin hindrance might be an interesting one mm. for you to consider, which is a uh, one we don't tend to play with since it can yeah. lead to character death, uh, <laughs> and pretty quickly sometimes. Um, yeah. but it, it, it could be, it could be fun to play with with this. I also see, um, as a, as your, uh, musical persona, instead of your trick shot persona, the, the morphing position that you might occupy in the carnival, uh, you could be, con uh, 
maybe utilized as a uh, advance writer for the carnival. So like mm. someone who would go to a town ahead of time with the playbills and sort of start like drumming up excitement and hype about mm -hmm. the carnival by like doing your spiel or singing some songs and entertaining the townsfolk and really be driving like, people into a frenzy. You'd be like yeah. a town crier almost for the carnival. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And then I come back and I go, all right, you know, let's set up on this part of town because that's where all the rich folk live. And this is, you know, we want to hit up this guy and this is the guy we're going to want to talk to because they run the town and all those things. And, and he generally gets or tries to get in the favor of, of everyone uh, and, and ingratiate himself there. But then when he comes back to the, to the carnival, he's, he's like, you know, you, you and you set up the tent over there, you, you, and he helps out and, and just sort of, directs the action as best as he can but um uh yeah yeah he i i i see him exactly as as I, that I, basically i like the idea that it could be like that sometimes like the first hint towns have that this carnival is coming to town is that they'll just everyone will be walking through the square and suddenly like someone will like start strumming on a guitar and like singing <laughs> that the carnival's coming. <laughs> I'm just well, picturing a, like the opening of Buster Scruggs. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, he, that's another that's another influence. And then also um, Professor Harold Hill from The Music Man. Uh, mm -hmm. He's, he kind of comes in and everyone's all like, oh no, a carnival? No, that's just, there's just dirty people. I don't want them in our town. They just, you know, they're, like, they're gonna- Not just any carnival. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he comes and he starts playing and everyone's all like, oh, wow. Okay, well, this actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah, definitely come on down. Um, so he tries to shift people's perceptions of things and whether, whether the carnival is actually, you know, good or not for the town, that's <laughs> to be said later. But I, I imagine he has helped Nightlinger in the past. he's a trusted confidant of some to some degree of nightlingers so this may change um and we're going to still be doing some work on on uh fine tuning things before we get started but essentially yeah. you're all going to have bonds with each other but you're also all going to be tied to nightlinger um right now the idea that i'm running with nightlinger as the spider at the center of his carnival um you work for him uh, because you were bound to him. Uh, at some point in the past, Nightlinger uh, granted you a boon or, uh, or did something for you. You made a deal with him, essentially, um, and in return for your service. If you choose to end your contract, whatever he did for you also ends. So if you made a deal to save an ailing family member, if you break your contract, that person dies. Uh, that kind of thing. Uh, you are you are bound to him by secrets and contracts, which we will get to. I'll be I'll be talking to each of you individually about your uh, your personal relationship uh, with Nightlinger. I know exactly what that is now. Fantastic. Another thing that stands out with this character um, in Suede, one change that I'm really really uh, a fan of that we haven't gotten to play with yet: the leadership edges. Um, which typically in uh, earlier editions of Savage Worlds, you could only use to affect like allied extras that were like a squad or like followers of yours. There is an edge you can take, I believe at the season drink that allows all leadership bonuses to affect wild allied wild cards as well, which essentially can turn you into like a mega bard. Um, like oh, the, right. the bonuses that you can provide to uh, your teammates with those leadership edges are sometimes pretty crazy the the in the castlevania session the first wild card at the church scene had like a bunch of leadership edges but he died <laughs> way before everyone else he did die <laughs> yeah that happens with enemy wild cards that are cool um so in combat do you imagine I, I'm, I'm getting kind of like a, a a face character sort of vibe like a like a like a social skills uh sort of vibe from what you're describing Yes, yes, I, I, and performance I so. obviously is going to be a skill that you would um, utilize. Yes. What do you, what do you imagine this character doing in combat? I'm, I imagine he still can shoot. He's, he's not awful. I mean, he's still a good shot when he can control uh, his, his illness. But okay, um, he is. Uh, He's not like James Bogue. He's not going to be fanning the hammer or anything like that. Um, and and in general, he'll he'll use whatever. He's just you know 
he's going to punch, he's going to kick, he's going to use whatever tools he has necessary. So, and in, in that regard also, as he grows, my intention was obviously being the bard. And so giving boons to the others to help boost their combat abilities and, and stuff like that. So help, help morale and, and, uh, potentially maybe get into healing and at some, at some point, but, um, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, do you feel like you, you're ready to start putting this, uh, in game terms? Yes. All right, let's do it. Um, and then uh, for the rest of you, as we are building Dom's character, um, feel free if you are looking through and you see any edges or hindrances or anything that seem like they could be useful or things to bring up, uh, definitely do. Obviously, um, if you have any any other uh, feedback or or things as we're as we're doing it, Dom doesn't have to take any suggestions that you have, but we are uh, as a group mind stronger than one any individual of us. So feel free to shout those out. Um, so Dom, let's start mm -hmm. with your attributes. We'll go old school. Great. Um, actually, no, let's not start with your attributes. Let's start with your hindrances. That's my favorite that's place to start. start. Yeah. That's, and it's yep. also coincidentally where Savage US, uh, Savage.us, which is the character builder that we'll be using, um, it starts as well. So let's start there. Um, right. there I got them. You, you have your hindrances already. Okay. What do you yeah. got? Okay. Uh, and obviously we can talk about these, but sure. Aelin, Aelin is a minor hindrance. Aelin is minor, okay. Yeah, um, uh, which means basically uh, if he rolls a crit fail, it becomes a major hindrance. Yes, um, and as a minor ooh. hindrance, it is going to uh, give you a minus one to any roll made to resist fatigue from any source. So yes. that can be poison, uh, that can be spells, that can be all kinds of things. It's, it's Wait, a pretty I, nasty hindrance. Yeah. Anytime yeah. you roll a crit fail or on specific rolls? Uh, on a roll to resist fatigue. Oh, he, okay. I was like, fails. wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Yeah, that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I gave him a habit of just sort of plucking his guitar idly um, while <laughs> just while things are going on. He just sort of tends to pluck out a tune, okay. whether people want it to happen or not. All right. Like that. And then his major is shame. Okay. Because he shot the guy? Yeah. Also, I have a guitar for you. <laughs> just a tiny little, little like, oh, just while I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's the happier I, version of think, the world's this smallest is my violin. Thinking, my thinking guitar. <laughs> yeah. I think that those are really good hindrances. Um, if you guys haven't already looked through the new hindrances available in the new version of Deadlands, uh, Deadlands? some of them yeah. are pretty yeah. killer. Alan was good ones. Alan was in the old version, but this is an updated version of it that I, I, I like a little bit better. Um, yeah. So those hindrances sound good to me. Um, and remember, we're looking to take four points of hindrance total. Um, so minor hindrances are worth one point and major are worth two. So you can take yep. um, one major and two minor, or you can take two major or four minor if you want. Um, or minor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, that, that seems pretty good to me. So yeah, okay. Uh, if you're good with those, we can, we can move forward. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's go to attributes now. So you start with a D4 uh, in agility, smart, spirit, strength, and vigor. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, you have five points at character creation to put into them. So you can make them all a D6. Your hindrance points uh, have also been afforded to you, but we'll get to those when we do edges next. So do you just want to, I mean, the easiest way I tend to find is just make them all D6 to start and then uh, move it around from there. But do you see him being exceptionally weak or exceptionally strong in one of those base attributes? I see him being um, not as strong, like uh, a strength of a D4. Okay, so you would start with a D4 in strength and uh, where would you put that additional point? Uh, for now, I would put it in spirit. Okay, so D6 agility, D6 smarts, D8 spirit. Mm -hmm. D4 strength and D6 vigor? Yeah. For right now? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, I like to do edges before skills because a lot of times edges have uh, a certain skill prerequisites. 
So let's skip skills for right now, if that's cool with you, unless you already mm-hmm. have your skills uh, picked out and decided on. I do, but we let's do what I'll do however you want to do it. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm also going to assume at this point that you, that you have your edges uh, chambered and ready to go too. Is that correct? I do, but I want to, I, I kind of want to chat about them. Okay, so bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you two things, um, and mm-hmm. I'm going to ask all of you these questions as well. So uh, the first one's an easy one. For your hindrance points, uh, how do you want to spend those? Do you want to spend those on upping attributes, getting a new edge, getting extra starting money, which, you know, I'm sure is helpful, but just seems like not, uh, it's not my favorite thing to do with hindrance points. What do you um, think? I think I want to uh, use both to up attributes. You want to use both to up uh, attributes? Because I believe that I get one free edge as a human. You do. Um, and then also one edge as novice, my first novice no, edge. Or not if you use no. it to... Yeah, it would just be, you would just be starting with one edge if you use all your hindrance points to up your attributes. Okay. Um, let's see, where was I getting that other edge then? Uh, okay. Well, yes. Um, let's let's continue with edges. Okay. And we can talk about how it gets there. <laughs> so a okay. better way. So um, like we were talking about earlier, the command edges afford some interesting opportunities to you, but that doesn't if that's not how you see your character working, obviously you don't have to use those. Right. Um, Because like like we were saying, you wouldn't actually be able to have them apply to any of your allies until you reached the seasoned rank and took uh, the natural leader edge. So that would be kind of like um, saving up for for the future if you started out with that. What edge were you thinking of beginning with? Um, So I uh, I initially was thinking... Uh, two, well, there were two edges that I was initially thinking, um, but right now I'm looking at possibly three edges, um, and that is um, Seventh Son, because I really uh, liked that when uh, that is a fun as, knack. All, all those knack ransom. edges are, are pretty neat. Yeah. I do, I, I do really like the knacks. Yeah. So Seventh Son, for those who don't know, is that you can spend a Benny to negate a Benny's effect. So. Um, if anyone spends a Benny and to get to try to get something or re-roll something or whatever, and they don't get what they want, uh, or they get something bad like a crit fail, I can spend a Benny and that crit fail never happened. Yeah. Or whatever bad thing happened because of that Benny doesn't happen. Um, so it's, it can be very powerful, uh, but it's also very limited in its, in its usefulness. Um, the other one was Gallo's humor, which is a, is a Deadlands, um, I, I do, I do really like that new edge a lot. Um, yeah. do you have it pulled up? Do you want to share, uh, with everybody what that is? Uh, yeah, let me, let me, if not, I have it pulled up here. I can, I can, yeah, do it I've, like. I've got it. So, um, uh, basically you laugh in the face of death and uh, you can use your taunt skill instead of spirit when making a fear check and uh, all usual modifiers apply. And uh, if you get a raise, you basically just mock the threat to its face and it acts as a plus one support for all allies. So uh, making the same fear check. So yeah, um, yeah I thought... I thought as the person who may be the tale teller and such uh, mm-hmm. in these things and everything, it made sense that, that he would um, have some, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's gone the gamut. He's been the, the head, you know, the um, one of the top billing acts in the carnival at one point to being just a nobody behind the scenes front man of sorts. And uh, he's seen every, everything, although he hasn't seen a lot of the horrors of the, of the Weird West necessarily, he still feels like he can kind of front it. Um, and uh, um, I kind of can see him being like, yeah, well, he, you know, you don't look so smart to me. And <laughs> just standing up to whatever comes <laughs> across him. He's sure. like, you know, like, he doesn't really have fear in that sense, I think. So... 
This is um, also a good point uh, to uh, remind you guys that fear checks play a big part in the in the setting of Deadlands, and grit and guts are gone now. Uh, yeah. Those those things are not there to help you out in the same way. They've been turned into edges. So uh, do don't overlook the importance of edges that help you out when it comes to making fear checks, because the penalties get pretty stiff in Deadlands sometimes. Okay. Yeah. So seventh son gallows humor. What was your third one? Uh, would be like command, basically. Command. Um, yeah, I, uh, I like. I mean, some of the social edges could be cool, um, just from a performance standpoint. Uh, but um, uh, like common bond and stuff like that. Um, or work the room um, work could the also room. be uh, be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Or, or rabble rouser, um, especially like if you if you leaned into taunt with gallows humor, you could use that taunt skill for other uh, other edges as well. Definitely. Right. Rabble yeah. rouser is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I like rabble yeah. rouser. Yeah. One of my Mysterium characters has it for my con games. So. I, I think Gabe might have had rabble rouser if it was around when when we had done deadlines. Oh yeah, that yeah, that feels pretty right. Um, <laughs> Does anyone else who is not Dom have, see any other edges that or uh, that might be helpful or interesting for this character to offer up and maybe? Uh... There are so many cool edges. <laughs> oh, no. oh, my second question that I was going to ask all of you, uh, Dom, do you see this character as a veteran of the Weird West? I do not. That was the one I was wondering. Okay, all right. So no veteran of the Weird West edge. <laughs> No, that's very cool. For my other character concept, absolutely. But for this one, no. Okay. Uh, anything else stand out to anyone else that might be uh, a cool edge to take? Um, no. I mean, Gallo's humor was the first one that came to my mind, but he already listed that. Yeah, that one's like, pretty solid. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, especially for the begin, the starting. I mean, one that could put, wait, is this a hindrance? <laughs> where, where have I gone? I think I'm a hindrance, <laughs> so never mind. That is not an edge. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think those sound good. What was um, the hindrance, may I ask? Talisman. Oh, yeah. I just thought that, I mean, that one I think is more for a, a magic user, but I just thought yeah. the idea that like, your charisma is tied to like your guitar or your gun or something. Kind sure. Of cool. yeah. 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 I, th I think mechanically that one is limited to characters with an arcane yeah. background, but I think um, so too. that could be an interesting like quirk type hindrance if you wanted to run it that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The another one that stands, I mean, Tale Teller, I assume, is one that you've mm -hmm. looked at. Um, That's a, I think it's an, uh, oh, nope, I'm wrong. It's a Deadlands Edge. That yeah. wasn't, no, I thought it was a veteran edge. Oh, no, it's just novice, actually. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, Tail Tailer is definitely one that I want to get at one point, but okay. I don't think I can get performance or persuasion up to a D8 without uh, sacrificing other things that I wanted to do. Okay. So, well, so, I mean, I, I, have a, I have a grander game setting question that Tail Teller makes me wonder about. Sure. Because so in our in our first Deadlands session, uh, I initially saw Tail Teller and like, oh, that makes sense. That could be one. And there was kind of the argument that we we didn't really like understand what was going on enough to make Tail Teller like make sense. Do our characters this time are they as even if they're not veterans of the Weird West, are they as new to everything as our characters were last time? No, by by sheer, I mean most of you were talking about taking an arcane background, which already yeah. gives your character a little more information about what's going on. But also just by sheer association and working with the carnival, you That's guys really definitely point. know some weird stuff is is yeah. up, just not the extent of it yet. Um, Tale Teller also gives you two um, bonuses in uh, the new version of Deadlands. In addition to helping you out when you're trying to lower the fear level of a place by telling uh, tales of, of your deed, um, you also uh, get uh, a point of conviction for yourself and for anyone who supports you uh, when you make 
that that role, which is which is pretty tight, especially considering I realized today we have not been fully utilizing conviction uh, correctly. <laughs> uh, conviction you can spend to add a d6 to any role, but if you spend a Benny in successive rounds, you can keep the conviction bonus going as long as you have a Benny to spend to maintain it. Oh, interesting. Wait, in combat, in success, so that's just in combat though. Essentially, right. yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, it, it, out because of you combat can use it for whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Um. Okay. Anyone else have any any suggestions for the for the singing cowboy? Mm. Uh, did you have a name in mind? Oh, we're not there yes. yet. Oh. <laughs> oh. He said yes. But yes. Say yes. Uh, I'm oh. getting the impression that Dom has fully completed all of his homework <laughs> worksheets. Um, okay. <laughs> Damn it, Dom. Okay. I did it for both care. So, oh my God. <laughs> let me copy one of those. Okay. No, no, no cheating. So, Dom. See, both of my characters, I've decided I'm using the same name no matter which one it is. There you go. That's a good way to do it. Um, <laughs> are you, so you've got three edges that you're looking at taking. You could only take really at max two, um, and only two if you choose to not up one of your uh, attributes. Uh, and instead just right. one attribute instead of two attributes. Right. So, um, yeah, I... Uh, I will also say the seventh sun, uh, n the knack edges are considered background edges and that you're really supposed to take those at character creation unless we can find an in-game justification for uh, taking it later on. Yeah. Uh, so I would, I mean, that basically walks down seventh sun i feel like for this then right because walks it down creation. as in as in like the one you want to take for sure yeah i mean if we're gonna i mean obviously we're following character creation now and this is this is the beginning of the character so i i feel if, like if you want to take it later on we can make you the eighth son and just have your <laughs> eldest uh, sibling die. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's at, how that works. <laughs> at which point you would become the seventh son. Right, right. Wow. No, I'm I'm good with taking seventh son now and okay. starting out with that, and then because I have I have a small idea of the uh, I to be fair I have not built out my advances like you can do in Savage.us. But um, oh, I, I Dom's lazy. Boo! I, I what are you even doing here, Dom? Of a uh, character progression here, of of kind of where where I want uh, them to go, and starting out with Seventh Son is is totally fine, and then growing into some of the other performance and and leadership roles and stuff like that uh, as as we go. Um, okay. So yeah, are you planning on taking? Uh, just one edge then right now so that you can up two attributes? Um, I, you know what? No, I think I'm going to take a edge. I'm going to take an edge for okay. my, uh, let's see, where's my, oh no, I raised two attributes. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to take two attributes then. Okay. How did All I right. get that other edge? Hmm. Cheater. I guess, yeah, I guess we'll see how that how that played out. Mm -mm. Uh, okay. All right. So uh, seventh son locked in as your edge. The only prerequisite that you are a novice, which you nailed. So um, <laughs> let's jump back over then to uh, your traits so that we can uh, figure out which one of your attributes you're gonna put that point into, lock down your skills, and then at that point, um, we'll just need to name this guy largely and we should have uh, most of what we need. So, uh, according to this, I, by giving myself two, so I have two attribute points to spend. So I'm gonna put uh, them in agility and smarts. So I'll have a D8 in agility, D8 in smarts, D8 in spirit, D4 in strength, and D6 in vigor. Okay. Sounds good. And, and then, then you have 12 skill points to spend. Um, so I'm going to raise athletics to a D6. 
Okay. Uh, fighting to a D6, shooting to a D6, and stealth. No, stealth is already. Stealth remains a D4. Um, uh, let's see. Notice to a D6. Okay. Uh, adding the survival skill, so that's a D4. Um, okay. Putting two points into taunt, so that's a D6. Uh, performance and persuasion both at D6s. Okay. And is that all of your points? I believe so. Yeah, that, feel, that feels like a, a pretty good spread there. Okay, so um, you upped your, so you've got fighting D6, shooting D6, uh, stealth you kept at a D4. Yes. Yeah, that's 12. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, notice D6, uh, survival a D4, taunt a uh -huh. D6, and then mm -hmm. performance and persuasion at D6? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, that sounds good to me. You've, you've set yourself up to meet the prerequisites of some of those other edges that you talked about taking, so you can mm -hmm. work, do those um, on your advances. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else... I, did you no i don't think you do okay all right um well that having been said what's the name of this guy dom uh the name of this guy is buster callahan who goes by buzz buster cool, 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 cool. buzz buzz callahan callahan i like that i like it a lot okay so do we want to real quick build dom's other character just in case oh. that's the one he wants to do instead? <laughs> i mean he already sort of did that so if we have to jump back over to that we'll just uh we'll take care of it at that point um i really love that one too that one's so fun but no i, I, I it is I a fun idea it. yeah why we'll why switch off every it. other episode yeah. oh man yeah. uh, that sounds like a lot of work um so the other thing that you have to start out is $250 um, to spend to gear yourself up. Um, mm -hmm. We're not going to do that right now during this, uh, since largely uh, most of that is just provisioning yourself with the basics, your basic weapon uh, and your basic supplies, and that essentially takes care of that $250. Each of you will have the opportunity to gear yourself up with El Cheapo goods uh, to get started, uh -huh. which um, are cheaper to use, but um, give you some pretty nasty penalties if things go wrong with them. Um, but uh, we can deal with that later on. That's not really a, a super clutch part of character creation here. So we will, um, I think, if, unless, unless you have anything else. Oh, sorry, Megan. I was just ask, gonna ask if there was an El Cheapo knife. Like, how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> there is. Um, the, it, it wouldn't just be, it just wouldn't be a very long tang. So if you go to stab someone with the knife, it just breaks in half and the blade just flies off. It goes through the handle and stabs you. Or it's a spoon. Oh it's God. a spoon. <laughs> um, is there anything else about Buzz that uh, needs but, to be figured out, Dom? Uh, I don't think so. I think. Um, uh, I think that's all for, for, for Buzz for the most part. Yeah. That's all for Buzz. All right. Awesome. Are you that sure you don't to... want to go with the last name Lightyear, though? <laughs> I like that. Oh, no. Buzz uh -oh. Lightyear to the rescue. <laughs> I got a dirty look. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, with the circus of... and beyond. Years speaking of academy of training wasted. Infinity and beyond. Uh, Megan, you're up next. Because <laughs> uh, you're the other one with a uh, single concept that you've settled on right now. So uh, tell us a little bit more about the character you're thinking of playing, Megan. Um, I still feel a little bit uh, in the air with her um, as far as like who she's going to be. Um, because I you know, I always have this impulse to go, oh, my my next character has to be really different from every other character I've ever played, <laughs> which, you know, eventually, which sometimes kind of limits your ability to play things you're interested in. Yeah, for sure. Because sometimes you'll play the same thing. So I, I kind of went the opposite direction from Rosaline with Adelaide. Um, and for this character, I want to be able to kind of split the difference, not necessarily like between Adelaide and Rosaline, but not worry so much about not having elements of previous characters and just play the kinds of things that I find very interesting. Um, yeah. So I'm still kind of trying to find the balance there. But um, what I really wanted to play with was um, a performer 
Um, and she's essentially, uh, she, she does some sort of, since she's, I, I wanted her to be a witch. So she does some kind of like, um, you know, I don't know, it could be some sort of a uh, uh, crystal ball gazing show or, or some kind of like, you know, spooky, um, witchy show. I don't or, know. Or it could be, like what was uh, Uhura's um, Forbidden Fan Dance? Was that the name of it from the, <laughs> uh, the original Star Trek series? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Something like that. I, but I want her to be kind of like, kind of showy. Like, I really want to have her her onstage persona and her offstage persona be two conflicting things, uh, essentially. Okay. Um, and then I, I want her to be uh, a, she's going to be, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but uh, a Romanian who escaped from either her family or left her family or some other horrible thing. Um, and but it's royalty she's royalty and i kind of uh, just looking at the witch the idea that um essentially the more you use black magic the more potential you become evil and horrible let's talk a little bit about this arcane background so uh okay. this is a new one um that's coming out in the deadlands companion and the version that we're looking at as of right now so a witch is a very powerful arcane background uh as a witch you have access to uh i believe any uh, edge that has anything to do with the arcane, regardless of what background um, it is tied to. Mm -hmm. you, you also get spellcasting bonuses the higher the fear level is in an area that you're uh, casting in because your power, unlike hucksters who, who may be a little bit confused about the, the powers that they're utilizing or mad scientists who don't realize that their designs are just the whispers of Manitou's, you are using evil magic and you know it. And yeah. the, the idea is often like, oh, well, I'll use this, this magic of the Reckoners against um, their, their creations, which, as the companion points out, the Reckoners are more than happy to allow you to do because uh, black magic is going to win over you in the end. Anytime well, also, you... oh, also yeah, I, can, I can change the, um, the fear level with one of my powers if I want to. Oh yeah, that one's pretty crazy. Um, but the other thing that's cool is whenever you critically fail, in addition to the normal backlash things, you gain a point of corruption, which either gives you a new minor hindrance or upgrades an existent minor hindrance to a major hindrance. Uh, so and it is I'm gonna be crazy. The only way to reduce your corruption is to successfully be a part of reducing the fear level uh, in an area. Otherwise, you just start gaining more and more negative hindrances as time goes on. Uh, you can also spend in advance to get rid of them, but yeah. uh, that's, that's also pretty costly. So your character literally begins to become twisted and warped by the uh, arcane energies that you're using, which I think is pretty cool. Well, what also what it talks about, at least for right now, is that generally the witches uh, come from either the, um, the Waitley family or they come from the Wichita witches. Um, so that Wichita witches is actually a witch edge that you can take, which is cool. Um, yeah. But however, you, you don't have to do either of these. And this is an instance where I don't want to. I actually want her family to be a, a magic line um, that essentially is full of just bad people, just a bunch of bad witchy people. And um, she doesn't want to be evil. And I think that's why she left. She's trying to escape it, but it's also the skill set that she knows. So she's, you know, it, it's not working, but she, she thinks it can. Um, that's kind of my thought process. And okay. I don't know, I don't have the full developed backstory for all the reasons. That's totally me. fine. Um, so it seems to me um, that the, uh, what you imagine your character doing in combat is probably using spells. Witches also have a very deep uh, list of available powers. Mm -hmm. um, you can essentially use most of them. Yeah. Um, so are you thinking of having her lean really heavily into being a caster, or does she also have physical skills that you want to utilize in combat? I don't know. I, I think... I mean, I, I think of her as being someone who um, is resourceful. So I think she would utilize whatever skill set she could, but also I think, I mean, her magic is powerful and that is probably what she would go for. Um, so uh, especially since Rosaline, I kind of didn't do that, even though she became more power focused. I might focus 
her on magic a bit more depending upon where we all land um but yeah for now i really i really kind of want to lean into a traditional what you think of as witch character as far as the the skill set and everything i really want it to be that like you know salem uh 1800s and whatever 1700s english romanian all those things which that you would expect okay um so the big question here megan is this character a veteran of the weird west <sighs> i where is that Hang on, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll give you the short version and for okay. everyone watching at home who doesn't know um, Veteran of the Weird West is an edge you can take a character creation that essentially starts your character out as seasoned. So you essentially gain four advances right off the bat. However, you also have to draw um, a card and consult the veteran table uh, to figure out what your character, uh, what terrible thing has befallen your character as a veteran of the Weird West. So it comes with a pretty hefty downside as well. The idea of it is cool, but I really don't want the mechanics of it. <laughs> you got it. Huh. All right. So uh, let us start building this witch. Or does anyone have any clarifying questions about Megan's character before we get started? Or clarifying information from Megan? No, but I had an idea about a bond between Buzz and this character. Uh, potentially. Well, not fair yet. We got to hear what everyone's characters are before we know what the bonds are. I know, but I just had a cool idea. Hang on to it. Hang on to it. Write it down. Uh, so Maybe. anything anything we need to uh, clear up before we start building? Uh, I don't think so. I don't know. I feel like Let's I always have it. that anxiety of feeling like I need to know everything before I build, but sometimes I think building is what helps you learn the rest. So. I'm also going to throw out... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just gonna say, I like we we still have time before the show actually starts, even though we're like recording this and stuff. Yeah, I feel like if if we have a great idea for our characters, it would still totally make sense to be able to like change an edge up or, or absolutely. Right? Yeah. This is these yeah. are still gonna be mutable. Um, and uh, in that respect, those of you who are watching, uh, you do have a leg up on us. I know yeah. we were lording the clues over you, but you've already seen our first episode, so at this point. You know more about these characters than we do right now. Um, so well, one thing I, I, you mentioned it briefly, I think, but the difference between this character and Rosaline, could you go into that a little bit more? I don't really know what the difference okay. is going to be um, because I want the, the, the things I ran into with Adelaide that were frustrating is that I couldn't be a more like, <laughs> for lack of a better way of putting it, more manipulative character in the sense of like talking her way in and out of things. I kind of missed that. So I want to allow myself to play with the aspects of Rosaline, of Adelaide, of whatever that I enjoy. I just don't entirely know what those are yet. And I don't want to cross too far into Rosaline territory. But mm -hmm. so I'm trying to find the line essentially, because I do kind of want her to be a um, I, I like the idea of the witch being controlling. There's a power called beguiling where it's kind of like, um, it's like charm person kind of, um, which is cool. I like the idea of her utilizing her magic to kind of move things around the way she wants them. Um, so that's similar to Rosaline, but I want to do it in a completely different way. Uh, but yeah, personality wise, I don't entirely know yet. I don't entirely know what her focus and goal is. However, I do want her to be a part of the Blackwood Society. Okay. Okay. Noted. I will, uh, I'll, I'll see. We're going to have a, a through line here with your characters. It I seems. don't know. <laughs> the, didn't the leader of the Blackwood Society die in some horrible shootout? A in a very ranking, pathetic way. <laughs> a high ranking member of the Blackwood uh, Society died. The leader of the Blackwood Society? No, no, no. Sounds like a little mm. punk. He yeah. did. Yeah, he died. He did die like a punk. All right. So maybe, maybe a good way to, like, figure out where the differences lie or start getting an idea is like work is like try and figure out what the hindrances are. Yeah, I was because, I was thinking that. So Rosaline was curious and, um, loyal and and uh, greedy. Loyal and greedy, right? So I mean, I think it makes sense to stick to probably like m stay away from those three and that'll already help like pretty significantly. That's a good idea. Probably. Yes, I, 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 I really don't want to limit myself here. I don't sure. intend to go for those, I, but I just in what, thought. 
I see what you're saying. So like sometimes when you're trying to create a new character, like, yeah, there is that impulse to be like, I'm gonna make this like different in every way from my previous character. But I think what I'm hearing you say, Megan, is you are identifying uh, aspects of characters that you enjoy playing and you yeah. wanna try and see if you can incorporate those into this new character in a different way. Yeah. Um, so let's see, do you wanna do uh, one major and two minor hindrances? Yes. Four minor or two major? No, no, no. The first one you said. Four minor? Um, no, you said one major. I know. I'm, and I'm two kidding. Minor. I just want to see if I can trick any of you into taking four minor hindrances. Listen, you're in the same apartment <laughs> and I can punch you. All right. Fair play. Whoa. Oh. Um, she knows karate. She would have to leave her chair in order to do that. So, what okay. hindrances <laughs> are you looking at for this? Honestly, character? I was considering heroic for the major hindrance. Of kind of the uh, the the idea that you know maybe growing up she was like I want to be a great hero a great ruler a great whatever but her family being like really cruel and all of these things and her not wanting to follow that path okay so that sort of the juxtaposition of having to deal with the evil magic that is trying to make her evil but trying to utilize it as it even says in the book to help okay interesting um, potentially that. I don't know. The hindrances are always just, I looked through them a little bit and that was kind of the one that jumped out at me the most. There, I, not for a major, there's also outsider, but I, I like the flavor of it, but I don't really like the mechanics of it. So I'll probably stay away from that. And the idea that maybe she's been in America for it, it long enough to not okay. really being outside I'm, I'm gonna throw out a couple of the new Deadlands hindrances that I am really enamored with and see if any of these uh, sound interesting for your character. Okay. Um, cursed is a major hindrance. Um, now you were cursed as Adelaide, but this is very different. Yeah. Um, basically each character that has the cursed hindrance gives me an extra Benny at the start of each game, um, which I think is interesting. Um, you, you just push us all to have cursed. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, I think everybody should maybe be cursed. Another one that I think is really fun is Trouble Magnet. And mm -hmm. I ordinarily don't like edges like this, but this one can be minor or major. So as a minor hindrance, essentially anytime you crit fail, there is um, an and added onto it. So like not only does your gun break, it also explodes or um, something like you get worse crit failures. As a major hindrance, though, it doesn't work like that at all. As a major hindrance, um, anytime the marshal must choose a random character to be hit, attacked, or otherwise negatively affected by something, it's you. I don't like that. Um, what, what about <laughs> I was talisman? definitely looking at that one, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. tal talisman, yeah, is another interesting yeah. one. Uh, honestly, Talisman stands out to me more for Garav's concept, which we'll get to um, oh. a, a, a little bit later, but we can have multiple people with uh, talismans, and I do like that hindrance uh, as a new one for characters with arcane background. Essentially, if you don't have a particular powerful object uh, psychologically that you believe uh, you need, you get penalties for spell casting. Yeah. Um, I, I also kind of like Night Terrors, um, which could yeah. be super harmful in, <laughs> yes, in Deadlands. <laughs> because it imposes a minus one penalty on all spirit rolls and fear rolls are spirit rolls. So I right. like uh, the flavor of that one though, just with yeah. like your your connection to the darkness and everything. Mm. That one is a major hindrance though. Right, I know. Um, man, I do like Talisman. So let's see. But yeah, I, I kind of also like the idea of of, of tapping into the magic aspect of witch and, and sort of the idea of being able to um, come up with magic because she is magical as opposed to it being contained in some way. And Obviously the that, mechanics are different, but still. Yes, but that is actually baked into the arcane background for like witches right. are just like super magical. Um, I, so. I like the idea that the way she manages things, she goes, okay, here's a problem. Sage does this. Lavender does this. If I put these two things together and I shove it on this owl feather and throw it over there, it'll do blah, blah, blah. I mean, you know, there things you like that. So I kind of, I think, uh, why can I not find any words lately? Uh, flavor wise, I don't like talisman quite as much. Okay. Um, yeah, but. Um, heroic is interesting. Uh, oh. night, night terrors could also be fun. I also thought vengeful could be fun, but I feel like that leans too heavily into just like, 
here, here's the other fun part about your character. Just earmark any any hindrances that seem like they could be fun for your character, because odds yeah. are eventually you're going to have to take them. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, oh, also suspicious. I thought was kind of fun. Th this this isn't like a a, a hindrance um, thing or whatever, but just a really interesting kind of fun take on like witches that kind of like is really based on like you know the old lore of witches. If you're ever looking for more uh, stuff like that, you should look into some of the Discworld books. I can give you like specific ones because there's there's some characters in it that, that like one of the sets of main characters are these witches. And they kind of revolve around this concept of headology, which is that what they do doesn't necessarily matter to the the spells. It's more about like the the understanding that uh, putting the pieces together and, and oh, yeah. understanding the spirit of things like will make it work, and people will believe it because you are a witch and you exude the idea of magical power. Yeah, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's magic guys belief. Um, I also want to point out, I, I know you mentioned that you fled your family um, mm -hmm. back it doesn't in Romania. It have to be fled. It could be okay. like cast out. It could be a lot of different things. Regardless of like what you end up choosing, um, wanted or enemy could also mm -hmm. be interesting uh, hindrances uh, that tie you to that aspect of your past. Honestly, being like cast out or or like, I don't know. Maybe I was, I don't know, that I can figure out later, but I, I know that Rosaline left her family, though her thing was different. She judged it was her problem <laughs> more than their problem. So um, that's not what I want to do with this character. I want it to be the opposite. Okay, so um, <sighs> what are you thinking? Uh, it was really hard. Um, so the ones that were standing out to me was heroic. Now, where's my right page? Um, Night terrors, you said. Night terrors, yeah. And there was uh, one other one. What was the other one we just uh, said? Suspicious and vengeful, you mentioned? Uh, yeah, I would probably wouldn't do that. Talisman we week. talked about. Talisman. Yeah, I guess either um, heroic or um, night terrors. Night terrors is really cool, but I'm just like, I like the flavor of it. I'm just a little concerned about I actually, that. I find the concept of a heroic black magic user interesting because you are going to get into conflict later on as your edges, as your hindrances start to pile up. It's right. going to be harder and harder for you to maintain that heroism, which could be an interesting thing to play with. That's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, just kind of playing with the, I just like playing with juxtaposition. So I thought, the the sort of potential misguided juxtaposition of that i think is interesting okay. so let's do it let's go heroic heroic okay now you need two minor hindrances yes uh i want uh crap i had one in my head crap anyway. is not a hindrance <laughs> i want crap I'm trying to keep track of all these tabs i have open is confusing um okay i wanted to look there are there are Witch hindrances, right? No, there's a witch edge, no, but no witch edges. hindrances. Okay. Oh, I mean, I don't want to do outsider, like I said. I want to avoid that one. Um, I Man, Dom, oh, I thought Dom, you spoiled me with your with your uh, pre filled out worksheet. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, I was just like, all right. Well, I guess I guess they're all gonna be that quick. Um, <laughs> obviously, secret could work. I don't know that uh, secret kind of feels like a or shamed. I thought about shamed being an interesting one. Um, I had another one. Yeah, suspicious jumped out at me. I thought that could be interesting if she's afraid that she's going to run into somebody she doesn't want to. She might be suspicious of everybody all the time. Um, we can also come back to hindrances and move on to uh, something else if that would be easier. Uh, no, oh, wait, oh, is Cursed only a, a, um... Only major. Big deal. I now, mean, again, you... you could take two major hindrances and call it good. No, I... You should take, um, Heroic and Night Terrors. That's true. I could do I that. I think that'd be kind of cool. Yeah? Oh, I also liked Gallo's humor. <laughs> but, uh... All making the same fear check. Um, yeah, I could do that. 
Heroic and Night Terrors? Yeah. Yeah, let's let's go with that for right now. You can always change it around if you yeah. want. Yeah. I, I really like the flavor of Night Terrors and from what you're telling yeah. about the character, I think it like really like feels like it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that could be cool. Okay, okay. Um, so that in mind, do you want to spend your uh, hindrance points on increasing attributes, gaining an edge? Both. You want to do both. Okay, so one attribute point, one edge. So let's start with your attributes then. Um, um, so for, okay. for your arcane background, you do have to have a spirit of D8. Is it spirit or is it smarts? It's spirit. It's spirit. Okay. okay. So I also think strength would probably be the lower one because a magic user. Okay. Know? So, I'll so start you're thinking D four strength? For now, yeah. Okay. Because I um, think smarts is what governs the power skill, right? Yes. Casting. Yes. Yeah. So I might want to up that. Anyway. Okay, so uh, if you have a D6 and everything except for strength, um, that gives you uh, two points. One from your hindrances and one from keeping your strength low. Maybe I should in this instance use my one additional attribute point to, to start everything at a D6 and then a D8. Just because I feel like that's a pretty solid starting point. And since this is a character I want longevity for, Okay, so you want to do D6 everything, D8 for spirit. Yes. Okay, so you use your attribute point to up your spirit, okay? Mm -hmm. And then um, one of your edges is going to be arcane background, black magic. Right. Which, um, which will require a spell casting skill of D4 or higher, which we'll just earmark for right now because we're going to do your edges before we do your skills. Mm -hmm. um, arcane background, which, I'm sorry. Um, what do you want your second edge to be? I would like a uh, familiar. You're gonna go with the witch edge. I like this one a lot. It's super um, cool. So you actually have to have a spell casting of D8 for this one. Um, okay. So this essentially gives you a small creature uh, that treats you as its mistress, but it's not your slave. Um, and it is a wild card with respect to wounds and rolling a wild die with its trait rolls, but it doesn't get bennies. You can spend yours for it though. Um, it can understand your speech and vice versa. Uh, and then it doesn't advance, but anytime you gain a rank, uh, it looks like you can up a power on the familiar. One of which is you can transfer wounds and fatigue to and from each other as a free action, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. Um, and it looks like at novice rank, you get to choose one of those powers for it too. So you want to take the familiar edge? Yes. And Megan, um, just out of curiosity, which animal um, are you wanting as a familiar? I mean, I ha am having a really hard time with that <laughs> because... Um, really? I, just, I thought like, this would be an easy uh, question for you to answer. I love cats. How can I not? I mean, I don't even know where she is. Under the bed. Um, but I also thought, I mean, I tried to look up what a, an animal that's associated with Romania is, but that's a wolf, which would be probably too big. Too big. Um, <laughs> but like I also a raven thought... Could be cool. An owl would be cool. Oh, owl is awesome. Oh, yeah. Owl would be cool. So um, I don't know. Um, I, I would probably either do owl, raven, or cat. Maybe snake, but I really don't think I want to go snake. Okay. Um, we'll think on that while we do your skills really okay. quickly. Um, so we know you have to have a spell casting of D8 in order to qualify for your familiar. Mm -hmm. um, so go ahead and sink those points into spellcasting, because that's going to eat up quite a few since you only have a smarts of D6. You're going to be spending two points to get your spellcasting above that. Also, my native language probably wouldn't be English. <sighs> Do we want to worry about that? Um, you, uh, if you're not taking the outsider hindrance, we'll just say you've spent enough time in America that you speak English fluently. Okay. Um, okay. Let's so see. After you up your spell casting to a D8, how many points do you have remaining? I have. You should have eight skill points eight. left. I would like to up performance. Okay, makes sense if you're going to be a performer in the carnival. Yeah, I'll make it a D6, I guess. Okay. Um, so spell casting, okay. Um, is a cult uh, a, a skill for Deadlands? Yes, a cult is a skill for okay. Deadlands. I feel like she would know that. Yes, uh, that makes sense to me. Uh, I think she would probably, I'm, let's see, how many do I have left? Five. I'm going to up her stealth. Okay. 
Um, now keep in mind, if you do not up fighting at all, no, then your I know. parry is going to be very low. Um, I'm going to give her one is doable. in fighting for right now. I just don't really think, I'm, well, I mean, she is in the West. She did get here somehow. So she's probably has some ability there. But she also just crackles with dark energy. So Right. So I'll give her a D4 for now. I can always up it later. Okay. Um, I feel like I should up her occult one more. So it's a D6. Okay. She's a witch. <laughs> sure. Um, and I feel like maybe I should up notice. Okay. To a D6. And then I have one left. You had mentioned, um, you know, wanting to be able to kind of play with people a little bit. However, as a witch, um, you wouldn't even have to up any of your social skills because like you mentioned, you do have access to the beguile power. Um, right. So you could, instead of making it social skill based, just make it totally um, arcane. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking of maybe kind of starting her specific. What if I did a uh, thievery? Sure. As my last one. Yeah. Seems like, you know, fortune teller. <laughs> let me let me ask you this, um, because I noticed you didn't touch athletics at all. Um, uh, is yeah. her performance, is her, sh uh, well, you have performance skill, the performance skill no, already in there. I think you're right. I think I'll, I'll put in, I don't think of her, I do think of it as being a more like, showy thing and not just her like sitting there or talking so in a practical sense though athletics is just like real tough at a d4 that that's that's true um yeah from a from a meta standpoint uh having a d4 athletics will will potentially come and, and bite you at, I at mean, some point to so me i would I mean, rather build I would rather build based on uh, color and a lot of that stuff I can do in an advance, but in this sure. instance, uh, thievery, I'm not that worried about. So I will do athletics because I think it makes sense. Okay. Uh, as as kind of like the physical aspect of whatever performance she does in the carnival. Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, those are your, those are your skills. That's all your points, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so you also get your $250, which you're not going to spend now. Um, in addition, as a witch, you're going to start with 10 power points. Um, you do get to choose three powers uh, from the list of available powers. But since that is a very long list and we do have other characters to build, I'm going to treat that as part of your gear for right now. The powers? And say, uh, yeah, and say that that's something that you can choose a little bit later on. Okay. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else that we need to know about this character before you name her? <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't think so. Any clarifying I... questions or comments from the rest of the group? Uh, no. I had okay. a question for Dom, but I'll wait till Megan's done. Okay. Well, okay. I have a list that I wrote down of potential names. <laughs> that looks like a long list, Megan. <laughs> and the biggest name on the list is Namaste. I like that Namaste. one. Namaste. Go with yeah. that one. Namast. Uh. <laughs> So Have you thought about I, making your name a pun of some sort? Oh my god. Yeah. Um, I was trying to look at some Romanian last names, and then I also looked at some other ones, but <laughs> there were some fun ones like, um, uh, Mol I gotta figure out how to say it, Moldovanu? Yeah, remember, this is your name, so you do have to know how to say your own name. Well, That's once important. I learn it, I'll know how to say it. Uh, uh, Petri, Stefan. Um, Pop, P O P. Pop is a name that kept popping up, which I thought was fun. Is a Romanian last name? Seemingly, yeah. Uh, Drac, D R A C H, Drac. Uh, so some of those, and then I have some other ones that are like Frost, Zale, Shadow Men, things that I, I looked up a generator. <laughs> okay, so I think we can all agree you're going to go with Pop as your last name. <laughs> um, just in a funny coincidence, I have a Romanian name generator open in another tab on my screen right now. So it's quite a coincidence. Probably the same one. Yeah. Well. Uh, so uh, first names, there's a lot of really cool ones. I kind of like, there's a, a section of uh, Celeste, Callista, Celestia, Celestina. Uh, that are kind of cool. fun. Celestina is Romanian. The others are, I don't know, witchy names. Um, and then there's other ones like Artemis, Kerrigan, uh, Aenwyn, which I think is 
Uh, I like Artemis. <laughs> Esadora, Amalia, Narcissa, Dana apparently is Romanian, Jade, which I don't think is Romanian, but it was listed as that, and Ionella, which I thought was cool. These are um, all really good names. Are you leaning towards any of them? Well, there's also Serafina, Eowen. Eowen is also kind of fun. I would say maybe uh, one of the sort of Celtic sounding names like Eowen or Cele one of the Celeste names or Callista is also fun. I, okay. I think I like Celesti C Celestia or Celestina better though. So I'd say one of those or Eowen. I, Eowyn sounds more like a D and D or Lord of the Rings style name to me, less like a Romanian witch. Uh, so I'm I'm leaning towards like Callista or Celestina or Celestine, one of those. Hmm. I really yeah. like uh, Celestina, if especially if it's like Celestina Pop. But I can I can imagine <laughs> I can imagine um, like or Celestia or something like that. That just sounds like a kind of witch name, like you'd have a tent to do tarot. Or yeah. a crystal ball or something, and it's like, see, see the amazing Celestia or the beguiling those two, Celestina. Those yeah. two C names you listed, I liked both of them. Uh, Callista and Celeste, Celeste yeah. or Celestia. I, I liked Callista, but I yeah, like both I like of Callista them. too. I think I'll do Celestina because it's Celestina? a little different. Celestina? Callista is one I've heard more. Yeah. Celestina. Okay. And pop. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that I want to do pop. <laughs> I'm I kind of like. I'm gonna drag. write it down. CP! It's okay. I'm doing pop now. So. <laughs> I like Buzz Drock. Pop. Drock? D-R-A-C-H? It's, yeah, D-R-A-C-H. There's also Norwood. Um, uh, Celestina Norwood sounds like some British lady. <laughs> what about Helga Sputnik? That one just came up in my generator. <laughs> oh, Helga. I do like that name. Helga uh, Sputnik. I could also do like, there's Petrie, Stefan. Uh, Celestina Frost sounds kind of cool. Uh, also, like an X Men, I like Drac. I like I like something that Drac. seems like uh, like blatantly, uh, you know, foreign. Uh, not yeah, not I, an American. I do uh, really like Moldovanu, though. Celestina Moldovanu. Um, that's like a mouth. That. That's a mouthful, but it actually does. It, it that sounds does work. cool, right? Yeah. Uh, Mold Moldovan Drac. No, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do Moldovanu to just to really be crazy. Celestina Moldovanu. All right. Uh, anything else, Megan, before we move on? So from there? many things. But... Obviously, there's going to be a little more work that goes into fleshing these characters out. But yeah. for right now, if we just get them built mechanically, that's a great starting point. So yes. I think that's pretty good. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Okay. Now, let us move on. Oh, before we do that, Garab, you had a question for Dom. Yes. Uh, wh what, how old is your character? 29. Fair point. Gotcha. 29. Uh, what about you, Celestina? I was thinking of making her closer to my age. Okay. Rosaline was young, but I'll say she's like, I'll put her at like 32. 32. Okay. All right. So, uh, Garav and JP, you had um, two character concepts that you were kind of flipping back and forth between. Um, so let's pick one of you to go now, unless one of you like clearly is like, no, I really want to go now. I, I, I know what I want to do. Neither of us feel that way, it seems. I will roll. <laughs> <laughs> Garav, you are one and two. Uh, JP, you are three and four. That seems fair. Garav Gulati. Okay. Um, Last man so, standing here. <laughs> so, I've been looking a little more and I, I kind of worked up a concept for, I, I couldn't do much for the concept of the clown because I don't know how you're going to change the, the voodoo stuff up to, but I got a decent concept for the metal mage idea. Uh, so, so the voodoo stuff, I would keep the mechanical um, effects of the two spells that you can cast that let you be uh, possessed by spirits. Okay. Um, I would just change the way that they worked uh, and okay. the, the spirits that you'd be channeling. So I would change the trappings of those spells, but keep the mechanical effects. Right. Um, okay. I, I just don't know. So m my only issues with this character is one... I, I, most of the hucksters I've seen in Fourth Ring are hucksters, obviously, the clowns anyways. Mm -hmm. the clowns are hucksters. So this will be obviously a little different, which is fine. The other thing is I don't really want to dress up like a clown. Because you don't I don't have to dress up like a clown. Uh, well, 
so I mean, so clowns clowns are are more than just uh, like white face circus clowns. Uh, the the tradition, the, nose clown. uh, the tradition of clowning goes back wanna, quite a ways. Rainbow hair. I don't want that either. I don't like clowns. That's <laughs> that's the issue here. I don't actually like clowns. But you can be a clown without actually having a cos uh, a clown costume. You can just be a character. Like you could be like. Oh God. Uh, I'm trying to think of something that's not offensive, but hey, Hobo Jones, you know, and like you're just like your character is like you're just this like itinerant wanderer. I don't but, know like, who that is. Well, it's not a, it's not a real person. I'm oh, saying, like, okay. This is an option. <laughs> I'm as, sorry, uh, I thought maybe it was a real person. Uh, clowning is actually just a style of performance, not necessarily a style style of dress uh but as as megan is demonstrating uh you can always use a red nose if you want i don't like it um oh it was megan so let, let me let me so i i will need a lot of help if we'd go the clown route because i don't really know how to build out that character but let okay. me tell you about the metal mage idea and then we can i i really want everybody's input on this uh so i forgot when i was playing uh, a um, mad scientist in our uh, Deadlands uh, Kickstarter game that there was the edge or eater where you ingest uh, ghost rock to give yourself more power points with a possible downside. So my idea of having a metal mage who's sort of a young uh, upshot uh, like gunslinger who does trick shots using metal mage powers to, uh, uh, to enhance his abilities and put on a show but he also has kind of a drug addiction with Ghost Rock, which is giving him those powers, obviously, and letting him do stuff. But he's very young and uh, very much enjoying the fame that he's getting. Now, my other idea, which is kind of different based on what Dom said, because I kind of thought, what if he was Dom's character's son? But he's 29, so that can't happen. But if Dom's character was older and he was the trick shot that you know used to be in, uh, maybe not in the circus, but was a good trick shot and taught his son how to do this, and his son took up the mantle a little bit, but used it for fame and fortune instead of doing whatever uh, Buzz did with it. Um, I don't know, I thought that could have been a fun dynamic, but I don't I, want to change Dom's character. I will sake. say, while metal mages are cool, the character you're describing would work way better as a hex, uh, as a hex slinger, uh, since hex slingers are, are, are already pointed at doing gun stuff. Uh, okay. And their powers support that, um, whereas okay. metal mages tend uh, are more like uh, like the sorcerer version of a mad scientist. They're like sort of innate improvisational uh, okay. mad scientists. That's actually I think better because I was also looking at the powers and I'm like, none of these actually let me do the the, the bullet cool stuff I wanted to do. You want the power ammo whammy uh, for hex slingers, which is a super duper cool power that lets cool. you uh, enchant the bullets in your gun to each have different effects. Okay. Uh, and those effects are really, really cool. Um, That's it. That, yep. Cool. Also, hex slingers are focused on gun, gun tricks and things like that. So all of that extra gun stuff, as opposed to taking away from your metal majory, would be supporting your hex slinging. Okay, cool. Then, the, then instead, metal mage, it would be hex slinger as my other concept, not metal mage. Okay. Um, well, so, so tell me this. Are you more excited by the idea of playing an arcane trick shotist? or a clown who uh, invokes uh, the spirit of uh, strange otherworldly clowns uh, and has them possess you. That's such, so hard because like- you could, also, you could also not be a clown. You could just conjure, like you yourself don't have to be a clown, but when you get possessed by these clown spirits, you become a clown. Um, that could be something uh, that- You're a clown conduit. Like really go the yeah it. clown do it <laughs> essentially <laughs> oh like, god you could be um which which uh, already as I'm thinking about it uh, offers up an interesting uh, connection to Nightlinger but um you <laughs> could he's a clown do it too you could be he is every, he's a seventh generation clown do it um you could be you know just like a, a stagehand or something else um who just happens to channel the spirits of like these carnival these dark carnival spirits. Um, you don't have to be a clown all the time. That could just be sort of like your powers are activated type thing. Okay. Okay. I, I but honestly, that is a much weirder concept than the hex slinger. So it is. Which, which I one? also have no point of reference for any clowns other than like cartoons. It, so I wouldn't really know 
how to play a clown, if that makes sense. I get what you're saying. I, I feel like what I'm hearing you say is that both of these concepts are interesting to you, but the Hexlinger is a bit more easy to wrap your, your head around. You have a stronger concept of what that character might be like. Sure. Yes. But I'm also totally fine if the three other people here want to take a vote and uh, just decide. I, I, I think most important is you playing a character that you feel like you'll enjoy playing and you yeah. can get excited about the concept for. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think there's this tendency, or at least there's a tendency that I have of wanting to kind of be like, everything has to be different. This has to be different. It has to be crazy and has to be creative. But sometimes I find the simpler stuff to, to allow me to be way more creative. So I would, I would go with your instincts. Don't feel like you need to create okay. something that stands out if you don't want to. Yeah. Okay. If that also, makes sense. I, I'll, I'll just add in, hex slingers are really fucking cool. <laughs> Okay, yeah, cool. I like them a lot. Um, but you wouldn't actually be able to become a Hexlinger until the season break. You would begin, you would begin play as, as a Huckster who also um, had, oh. had some gun stuff because you can't take the Hexlinger edge until season two. Okay. Unless you wanted to be a veteran oh, yeah. of uh, uh, That's interesting. At which point you could begin play as a hex slinger, um, but you would have some sort of messed up downside. It's all <laughs> coming full circle. But I love downsides. I know you do. You uh, also get all of your novice advances and stuff, so you, you, you don't skip over novice at all. You, yeah, you, you get you all those. Start play with four extra advances. I mean, I, I don't really care about, I, I'd rather not be overpowered, to be honest. I'd rather just have the bad stuff, but that's not a thing people oh, should do. <laughs> don't, don't worry, the bad stuff is pretty Is it? Okay, like, I, I haven't looked at the list at all. Well, Can I look at it? No, you cannot. Okay, great, I don't want. Uh, that, one is in the, that one is in the Marshalls uh, section <laughs> of the book. That, that list is just for me. Okay, cool. I, I think I'm more excited about Hexlinger, but that doesn't mean we couldn't have that clown idea in the circus as an NPC that JCC plays, just putting it out there could be really cool. Oh yeah, I mean, if you're not gonna use it, I'm stealing that. <laughs> okay, great, great. <laughs> that's way, at that's least way too good of an idea for uh, <laughs> uh, to not use. Cool, cool. People <laughs> after four episodes are gonna be like, man, it's weird that like, JCC keeps sidelining all the main characters for this like Clownington guy that he's made. I also wanted to like, if I don't know if this is, you know how we were talking about the leadership edges for extras? I wanted that clown to have like side clowns and have like a clown cart if I did that idea. Oh my like, God, that's such a great idea. Cause like, yeah, like other clowns as, a, as like your own posse, like, oh, so like, I, I know that's like way later because you can't do that until later. You should so. carry them around in a bag and then open the bag <laughs> and like five clowns crawl out of it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so creepy. I hate it. Um, okay. So you want to go Hexlinger? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to settle on Hexlinger. Okay, so let me pull up that edge real quick just so we can make sure that you are aiming yeah, in the right, right direction. Here. And fuck it, let's do Veteran of the Weird West. Let's do it. Let's see what you happens. Wanna do it? You let's wanna do it? do it? I'm like excited <laughs> that you're doing it. Let's that. see what happens. Okay. All right. This is this is actually very exciting. Okay. So let me back up to the right section of this book here. Um, my my other character, I was going to be a veteran of the Weird West. Not yeah. too late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Topsy turvy. We, we know you already have it built, Dom. So <laughs> it's uh, true. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so uh, in order to first things first, in order to qualify to be a veteran of the Weird West, you have to be uh, you have to have a spirit of D six and an occult of D six. Okay, so, so I so, should do traits first then. Well, no, not necessarily. Just know that. Um, oh, okay. And then um, while we look, while I you have Hexlinger pulled up, you said. Yeah, I do the okay. edge for Hexlinging. What are the requirements for that? Uh, seasoned, arcane background, huckster, shooting D eight. Okay, awesome. Um, Cool, 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 cool. So before we get into any of the fun that I am about to get to have, um, let's talk <laughs> about your hindrances. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, um, let's see. So this, this is gonna be slightly different now. Might not... I recommend Grim Servant of Death? Mm. Uh, <laughs> Boy, that's a hindrance? Be... Uh, it be... is. Yeah. Grim, hindrance, Grim Servant of Death uh, gives you a plus one to every damage roll you ever make, whether it's fighting, shooting, or an arcane spell. Um, Give me that downside. However, <laughs> it's huge. Um, you end up uh, on the wrong side of people a lot of the time, and anytime your attack is a critical failure, you hit the nearest ally with a raise. 
Oh my God. Even if they're not next to you. Even you know if what? it's a hand to hand attack Sweet. and they're on the other side of the room, <laughs> we still have to figure out a way oh for God. that to happen. Here's That's what we should so do. Fun, I should take major trouble magnet. You should take. <laughs> <laughs> Oh so every God. time, every time Garam's character crit fails, it always hits Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> That's your bond. <laughs> That's pretty great. That's pretty great. We got to be like best friends or something. That's oh my be God! Fun. That's I really love great. That. Um, uh, don't yeah. have to take uh, Grim Servant of Death. That one is actually um, pretty, pretty difficult uh, hindrance, um, and I would need the rest of the group to sign off on that one if you wanted to take it. <laughs> Well, okay. I, I would, yeah, I would, I'm okay with it. I would just say it's a, it's, it's a, there's a huge downside to it, but also you don't know what your uh, malady is going to be as a veteran of the weird West, which could be major as well and affect okay. that even more. That's true. And in fact, I'm not going to draw for that until we have your character fully yeah. built. Because That's that exactly is, what I wanted. That is the way it's supposed to happen. That's exactly what I wanted. So yes. if you make a gunslinger and you end up blind, don't blame me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so bad. Um, okay. Uh, I'm fine with that as long as everybody signs off on Grim Servant of the Weird West. Gr Just Wait, a Grim Servant, Grim of, Servant death. of Death. That's what veteran I mean. of the weird yeah, west. Yeah, but he's he's saying like the combo. I'm combining okay. it. <laughs> yeah, grim servant of the weird west. Yes. Um, does anyone have a major veteran problem of death with um g with what tends to happen accidentally with Garab's characters all the time <laughs> being baked in mechanically uh, to the game? Oh man, I kind of don't. Okay. Yeah. Playing to type grim servant o death as your major hindrance. Um, do you want to take two majors, or do you want to do a uh, major and two, or a uh, major and two minors? I should probably do a couple of minors now. <laughs> All right. I like I like the concept that my character was the trick shot king and accidentally shot one person <laughs> and was drummed out of the of the circus. If I'm blind, it has to be me though. <laughs> I shot you. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be yeah. me if I'm blind. Um. Garage okay. Cool. Accidentally shoots people left and right, and it's like, yeah, it's fine. Sorry, fine. we already dealt with the bad publicity, so now we're just that carnival where you <laughs> yeah. might get shot. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry. This is. Uh, I'm gonna look at hindrances in the big book because that has all of them, the most of them, anyways. Uh, do you see any more ones that are uh, Deadlands exclusive that could be good? I mean, uh, as far as minor hindrances go, uh, there aren't a whole lot. Uh, yeah. Lion lion Eyes and Heavy Sleeper and Talis... Uh, well, so Talisman um, would actually be a, a pretty good one for you since as a Hexlinger, you do have a gun that you engrave with runes that okay. is your... Um, although, hold on, let's see. So it notes in Talisman that it doesn't work for um, mad, scientists. mad scientists because they already have a dependency on the thing. So that might be the same. Well, actually, um, the interesting thing about Hexlingers is that's just an edge that Hucksters take. So you can still cast spells without your gun, um, just as a Hexlinger without the talisman factored in. You well, can cast spells without your gun. Having your gun allows you to cast certain spells for f like as free actions. Oh, well, interesting. If I think it could be interesting though if he was gonna like take talisman or something to do it something that's like a little more like symbolic. Like it could be something sure. like a bullet that shot him or something like that. Oh, that based he holds on, like, on to based on or, my malady, maybe? Or like an amulet or like something like that that you're like, oh, this is actually the source of my power. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, would that be minor or major? Uh, we would do that as my as minor, unless you just wanted to be a grim servant of death and also have a major talisman. Um, I I had a weird idea. Go for it. I'm in. I'm into so it. So you were talking it. about you were talking about like doing the the chewing ghost rock thing earlier. Yes. Or, what, or what if you have like a bullet or something that you like chew on sometimes? Is that weird? It is, well, the, what does this have to do with talisman? I'm saying if like that, if if like you believe that you like draw like your powers from that or something. That seems or more like it a, could be from uh, like. Seems like a habit more than sure, a talisman yeah. or a combination of the two, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I was thinking uh, if it chewed like gunpowder or something, like he literally 
I don't know. That'd probably yeah, kill you. Could, but hey, I'm yeah, I'm yeah. a I'm a veteran. Your mouth might blow up. I don't know how that would work. <laughs> I'm eating Ghost Rock. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's totally fine. Um, I'm I'm cool with Talisman. Uh, let's go with Minor, unless uh, and I think we can find one more Minor that's good for me. Okay, so Minor Talisman. Minor Talisman. Unless unless I find one, I can't find one that like meshes with my stuff. Oh, uh, let's see. What else might be fun? Uh, anyone else who is looking at hindrances, throw something out if you see anything that seems like it might fit. Uh, Death Wish. No, I feel like that's going to happen naturally. Well, sure. <laughs> uh, bad luck. <laughs> no, I'm gonna need those bays. <laughs> no thanks. Also, that's another major hindrance. Oh, it's yep. a major. Oh, you um, need a minor hindrance. Jealous? Uh, you could be jealous of other people who are... Jealousy you know, bad, actually. Yeah, if they're like a better shot than you or something. Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Greedy be could be fun. Greedy could be fun. Also, uh, driven is is an interesting one if you're like trying to like be the top of your uh, like you're gonna be the top act forever and you're gonna do anything you have to in order to do that. Yeah, I like both driven and jealous. Has anyone have we ever taken jealous before? I feel like I jealous wasn't a hindrance in deluxe. Oh, uh, okay. So that's a that's a suede hindrance, I believe. Um, I like jealous. I think over. It's minor or major, interesting. As a minor yes. character to focus on one particular subject, that could be shooting, obviously, such as unrivaled skill, or pilot. as a pilot um, or romantic interest, interesting. Thin-skinned, mm. uh, kind of like a Billy the Kid type thing, where people just get under your skin super easy. Yeah, and uh, or Marty kind of riled. Or Marty yeah, McFly. Marty McFly. Nobody yeah. calls me chicken. Uh, I do even. like that, too. Uh, Thin-skinned or jealous. Thinskin has more of a mechanical thing, whereas Jealous is sort of a little up in the air. Yeah. Sorry, were you going to say JP? No, I was just saying I feel like Thinskin kind of like paints a picture of your character as like sort of a powder keg about to go off all the time. You know, I, I kind of, Calvin was sort of Thinskinned. He didn't have it, but he like acted like he was. Um, I think I'm going to stick with Jealous. Jealous? Yeah. Okay. Jealous. Impulsive. I might change that. Oh, that's a major. Never mind. Impulsive. Yeah, impulsive is major. <laughs> I might, yeah. I might, I might switch the two. We'll see. Okay. Oh, Val is also one. Ooh. Oh. James Bogue had Val. Oh, did he? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, not that that changes anything. I just no. Yeah, Val no, is sorry, different. Sorry, you can't. You can't take Val now. <laughs> I was. I, I also had written down small for my other one. You when were, I was a metal were like age. Val Habit and thin skinned or something. You know, I'm gonna no, say small is listed as saying. a minor hindrance, but that one's um, mechanics are pretty major in I, my mind. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like, holy, like yeah, that affects every combat, and that's pretty. Yeah. Major, I mean, it just it, it just majorly re it, it just reduces your toughness by one permanently, uh, along with your size. So you're just kind of like this this short nut. Uh, very tough dude. Yeah. Uh, let's do this. Let's go between Jealous, Minor, what was the other one? Thin-skinned, or maybe even Quirk, because I kind of like the idea of the, the bullet chewing thing, but I don't know if we can make that work. Let's, uh, one of those three. How about that? Do I have to choose now? Uh, yes. Okay, then I will go with Jealous. I like it. Jealous. Okay. Cool. okay. So, um, we know what your two edges are. Um, it, it, so in order to start your character, well, okay, because you were planning on taking Veteran of the Weird West, you don't have to take two edges. You could just have that be your edge and then put both of your other hindrance points into attributes. Okay. Because part of taking Veteran of the Weird West is getting four extra advances. Right. Um, so, or you could make... Uh, Veteran of the Weird West and Arcane Background Huckster, um, your starting edges and have one attribute point uh, to bump things up with. Let's go with that, I think. Okay. So let me, my hindrances, let me do that. Jealous. Okay, so, so I need you to write a couple things down because there's a lot of prerequisites <laughs> for this character. Okay, <laughs> okay so I as, am ready. As a Huckster, you need to have a gambling of d6 or greater. Okay, gamble d6. And spell casting of d4 or greater. Okay. 
as a veteran of the Weird West, you need to have a spirit of D6 or better. Okay. And a this cult maybe. of D6 or better. These aren't too bad. I was just going to say, maybe just go into um, Savage US and just set these things. Yeah, I'm, right uh, well, bat. yeah, that's, that, I'm kind of doing both here. And then in order to be a Hexlinger, which you wouldn't take until your last advance uh, as part of Veteran of the Weird West, you need to have a shooting of D8 uh, right. or better. Right. Okay. Uh, I can start with shooting D8. That's not a problem. Okay. So let's start with your attributes then. So you're going to spend two of your hindrance points on raising one of your attributes. So did you want to do... Um, everything at a d6 and then one thing raised to a d8 or do you see uh this character this character like really suffering in one attribute mm, i kind of want to i mean i can't base it on my malady that's what i would want to base it on i think i i want to do vigor at d8 just to, to say like he survived because he was a little tougher than most well, so your thing may not be a physical malady. Um, there's, oh, okay. There's a bunch of different things it can be. Some of them are metaphysical. Some of them are physical. Some of them are um, like background stuff. Um, some of I'm them not, are just like gaining new hindrances. Uh, I'm going to do agility D8 then because shooting is my main thing. Yeah, yeah. So, that, that sounds good. So yeah, uh, shooting D8. So or, D8. Sorry, agility D8, not shooting. D8, agility, D6, everything else to start? Yeah, I think that's going to be me. Okay. Yeah. And then um, do you want to do Arcane Background, Huckster, and Veteran of the Weird West as your two starting edges? Yes. Arcane Background, add. Arcane Background, oh, sorry, Veteran of the Weird West. Oh, it's not on this list. Yeah, it's not on uh, savage.us right now. It shall be Veteran of the Weird Worst. OK, cool. I got those two on there. OK. So let's start with just those edges and build out your skills. Um, and then we'll figure out where to go next. OK. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so first, plug in your skill points for all the prerequisites that you need for Veteran of the Weird West and Huckster. OK. Hang so on. you've got to have at least a D6 in gambling. D6 in gambling. Got to have at least a D4 in spell casting. OK. You got to have a spirit of D6, which you have, and you have to have at least a D6 in a cult. Got it. Got it. Okay. Common knowledge. Oh, that's a the common knowledge starts at D4. That's why. It's yeah, there. that's one of the. Um, I see. Everybody gets that skills. Yeah. Cult. So, how many skill points does that leave you with? Uh, let's see. I also did you say shooting? I have shooting on here because that's shooting is you don't need that until you're seasoned essentially, um, which you will start out as, but you're going to have the chance to build up to it. But yeah, you definitely should put some I points see. into shooting. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do shooting D8 just because that's okay. I'll, I'll eventually need it. I have skill. I have six skill points left after making shooting a D8. Yeah, shooting D8, occult D6, spellcast D4. Gamble D6. Oh, wait, no, Gamble wasn't plugged in. Uh, four. Now I have four. Okay. Yeah, yeah that sounds, that sounds, that sounds cool. about right. Yeah. Okay. So four skill points. Not a lot to play with. Uh, spend them well. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do, I feel like gambling has to be in there. Gambling is the school you, is the skill you use for dealing with hucksters, right? Uh, dealing with the devil is, uh, yeah, that's your gambling role. And I will be doing that for hexling, correct? Right. That's yes. the. Bye. You can do it for hex slinging. Um, oh. dealing, dealing with the devil is the special thing you can do as a huckster where you spend a Benny and then um, do the poker hand in order to get additional effects. You okay. never have to deal with the devil to cast spells as a huckster or a hex slinger. Gotcha. Okay, uh, I'm going to do survival to a d4. Okay. Um, intimidation, maybe? Uh, if you are a shooter, um, then odds are you might get into the odd duel. So intimidation or taunt um, can definitely be helpful, but uh, with the new duel rules, you can test in a variety of ways. Okay, so I don't have to have one of those two as my... You don't have to, but uh, it, you know, it, it really depends on what you want. Um, uh, yeah, I want to pick one of those. Didn't, didn't somebody else say they were doing taunt stuff? Was I that believe Dom's I am. Or... Yeah, right? Dom's yeah. going to be doing taunt stuff. Um, Oh, you know what? I'm going to do performance. 
because I'm a performer. You are also a performer, that's true. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that to a D8, and then I'm probably gonna use my last point to actually do riding to a Wait, D4. you're gonna make d performance a D8? Oh, sorry, no, D6, I'm sorry. Okay, because I, I was gonna say, um, performance, if you, if you think about it from a meta perspective, so you have more points to spend, um, the bulk of your performance is the shooting. Um, so the, the show oh. that you're doing could mostly be trick shots. You don't actually have to be, uh, have to have a lot of, uh, presence as a performer. You could have someone else who's like the barker for your show while yeah. you're doing the shots. They're like, look out, here comes the behind the back over the, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. I like that a lot more actually. So I'm going to negate my performance, uh, actually fighting. I probably need some fighting. Um, it seems like it would be helpful if at least one of you had some uh, some points in fighting. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Cause uh, I, th I think both, I do. Uh, you have a D6 in it, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I feel like I probably got in a few scuffles, so. That makes uh, sense. I did writing D4, fighting D6, maybe thievery? Writing, writing is one of those skills that like you don't really need all that often until, as we saw in our Lawless game, until you desperately need it. So yeah, <laughs> yeah right. it, it, it's definitely helpful to have uh, at least someone with some writing knowledge. Yeah, a D4 is like base minimum. So, well, yeah. not, I guess it's not base minimum, but uh, uh, that's okay. So that's it for me. Fighting D6, writing D4, shooting D8, stealth, or the one that's already given, gambling D6, occult D6, spellcasting D4, survival d4 pers oh nope that's also built in i will say spell casting at a d4 is not an amazing um rank for casting hu huckster spells oh um, but you will be starting as a hex slinger because of veteran of the weird west so and you can also use some of your advances um to up your skills as well okay uh yeah i, I will do that with my advances then i'll up that okay. a little more okay all right so you've got your uh skill points all spent yeah 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 zero out of twelve now Okay, now advance four times. Okay. <laughs> right, just um, do it. And actually, while you are taking a look at that, would it, uh -huh. would it be okay if we jumped over to uh, JP? Cause, but, like, yes, please. But before we do that, we are going to need a name for this character. Oh, but I just made him up. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I, I guess since you have to keep coming up with um, these advances, you can wait on a name until we come back to you to draw your terror card. The only name I wrote down was Woodrow. I, mean, I think Woodrow's a dope name. Okay. I like Woodrow. Yeah, that's a first name. Can we obviously. call you Woody. I think. <laughs> can we have Buzz and Woody? <laughs> oh my God! You no. ruined my joke. It was going to be a long-term thing. How dare you? Oh my God! God damn it! You can't. You can't play these things with JP. He's going to be one step ahead in the comedy JP! game. JP, I should have texted you when I thought of the idea. <laughs> Don't say this out loud. Okay, I won't do Woodrow because that's going to be a thing. I'll change it. Uh, yeah, I do like Woodrow, but I love it. It's a I, I thought it was a cool yeah. name too. It so. is a cool name. All right, so um, take a look at your advances because you do get four. Um, it'll it'll bring you up to see, so you'll be able to take your first seasoned uh, rank, and I imagine you're going to take Hex Slinger as as yes. that seasoned one. Yeah, so knowing that, plug in the rest of your edges, and we will come back to you for your character name and to draw your veteran of the Weird West card. Uh, do I still get an attribute? boost in this novice one or does that count as the first one you uh oh yes um yeah so you can uh okay. get your one attribute increase at the novice rank okay cool thank you um i just pulled up a cowboy uh name generator and the first one is victor friendly face parish so <laughs> i like that name a lot i that's, that that's, that's actually that's actually really cool Victor Parrish. Sure, Victor Parrish is kind of a cool victor name. Parrish is a really fucking cool mm -hmm. name that is a cool name i don't know if i, I feel like friendly face one. but that you guys will appreciate. Jack the Gentle Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Jack no more Jordans. Jordan. I am Come Jack. Oh, good the old Gentle, gentle Jack Jordan. Jordan. <laughs> Victor Parrish. Cool. I'm going to go with that unless I think of something else. Okay. I'm going to write Thanks, that Megan. down. Yeah, you're welcome. There's I like a lot it. Of we, we call you Vic, which I think is like a cool nickname. Yeah. It is a cool nickname. Sounds cool as Woody. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, they can't, <laughs> they can't all be winners, kid. All right. JP. Okay. Um, after having heard um, everyone else talk about their concept, does this help you cement uh, one direction or another, or, or where are you at right now? Yeah, I, I think, well, we're, we're all pretty, 
well, except for Dom, we're all pretty castery. Which I love, actually. That opens up a lot of really interesting um, things that we can do with well, the more arcane side of things. So my thoughts were, because I, I had two characters, and one is more of like a down-to-earth, just regular guy who sort of does the, the like, helps out with everything. But I kind of think that's not the flavor of the party we're building right now. So I think I might go with, so my, my character concept is like, is a mad scientist who basically is a, a toy maker and he makes like little like he started out as a toy maker but as you know with the uh discovery of ghost rock and stuff has like started building machines out of it and that kind of thing and i kind of imagined him as being the person who like if they have like a a, a sign that like waves and does stuff he like makes it and does like mechanical stuff for it and not a performer himself but has an animatronic puppet that he has to a show for him um and then i kind of imagine that would be his like primary mode of like combat and doing things i really uh, like this concept because it kind of adds this sort of like messed up uh geppetto uh sort of like and that's like uh, con i was thinking it. it would be like sort of a geppetto kind of thing and also to a smaller like to another extent like you know the the dc villain the like ventriloquist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like I, I like the idea that he sort of makes up for his own like insecurities and failings by like having this this like puppet that can like talk for him and do stuff um and if and i i don't want it to it, it's like it, you know, it, it, it's not going to, like, it can't do everything. It's not a sentient creature, at least at first. Who knows? Um, <laughs> it is mad science, after all. But, at, at, and I, I want him to be, even though he's a mad scientist, I want him to be, at least at first, kind of like a grounded person who just, like, gets excited about making things and, and is maybe not, like, like gets kind of nervous about the things that he's doing or, like, like, I thought of like maybe tongue tied or something as a uh, as a hindrance because he gets like really excited about the things that he's working on, but isn't always like good at expressing it. You, you know, he's more of a like build stuff, uh, get into the weeds, and he's definitely not a performer himself. Okay, uh, in the whole deal. Yeah, I, I mean, this is sounding interesting to me. Uh, so, so looking through the available powers for mad scientists, summon ally is not one of them. However, I think that that would be something that we can easily uh, just just homebrew for this and say that it is because I really like the idea of like your little animatronic. Like this puts me in mind of uh, Qu Quaterman from uh, from from Doomtown yes. a little bit. Like one <laughs> character just builds this like this steampunk robocop uh that <laughs> yeah. defends the town um and i kind of like the idea of yours starting out as like this like little mechanical boy who eventually turns into like that kind of like, and then you Waterman start like upgrading thing. it because you mm -hmm. have ideas for things and, yeah and and maybe talking to it a little more like it's actually a person sometimes which you know Every mad scientist might start off just being a normal grounded scientist, but um, <laughs> yeah. the, your critical failures are the kind that tend to mess with your head uh, with mad science. So you'll right. be picking up some weirdness as, as you go. So I, I think this is a great starting point. If this is a character that excites you, I, um, I think there's a lot of potential for this. I think it feels pretty exciting. I don't really know like what I'm feeling for his personality exactly, but except for like what I've told you, like kind of excitable, intelligent, maybe a little like uh, a, a bit, I don't know the phrase, like I would say kind of put upon, but I kind of imagined him like being a bit like fumbling. And, like I, I had been thinking about trouble magnet as a possibility. I'm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Dom, um, how do you feel about uh, playing with three characters who are definitely all going to lose their minds? <laughs> <laughs> you have to sing us to you have to well, caretake for us. Let's let's not yeah. forget the fact that um, Dom at any point could end up just dropping dead from his uh, oh, from his yeah. illness. <laughs> Oh, so hey, that backup character might come in handy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for everyone. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's 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 explore this one a little bit then. Let's start with some hindrances. So you mentioned um, so, you mentioned tongue tied. Tongue tied was the first one I kind of looked at. I, I, I sort of made a, a short list. Okay, but I'm 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 not necessarily unopen to other ideas and that kind of thing. But these are ones that I, I thought like fit my mental image, which was tongue tied, trouble magnet, anemic. I was thinking Doubting Thomas, but I actually kind of don't want that one. 
um, hesitant phobia and like a quirk of some sort. Okay. Yeah. Um, so of those that you mentioned, only tongue tied and potentially a uh, trouble magnet are major. I guess phobia could be major as well. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I think I'd probably go with tongue tied or trouble magnet as a I, major. You know what? I kind of like tongue tied for this character. I think what you, when you were talking about that, that was kind of interesting. The idea that like he's, he, uh, expresses himself through the toys that he makes instead of the things that he does. Well, and obviously like as, as a player, I like to be talky and I, I, I think that tongue tied could let me still be talky, but just like stumble over my words and like the concepts that I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I mean, and have fun with that. Essentially, it is going, it uh, applies a penalty to intimidation, persuasion, and taunt roles that your character yeah. would make. Um, and I, I think kind of, in fact, playing like, playing him as like being a little inept at trying to do those sort of things could be like a fun way to you know, do it like, like sort you of should, a version oh. of the big mouth hindrance, but. Yeah, I was just going to say you should do big mouth, but. Yeah. Yeah, tongue tied <laughs> and big mouth. Do those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might actually work because then you would be trying to say things that we don't but want you to say, but you can't. You know. It all works out. So uh, I, I was kind of thinking tongue tied and maybe minor trouble magnet. Okay. So because I, I just, I think of him as the sort of person who just like, like I thought about like uh, what was the there's one that's like bumbling or something like that. All thumbs. All thumbs, but that's yeah, too. You don't want to take that thing. as a mad scientist. Yeah, that's no, gonna be. Sense. <laughs> but I still kind of like the idea of like he just always kind of ends up like. <laughs> yeah, like like he's just sort of like this oh this unlucky guy like he can't get his words out and trouble always seems to find him but he just mm -hmm. loves making toys. Yeah, but he, he likes it. It's great. You know, it's a carnival like. Like, I get to make all these lights and do things and... Okay, okay. So tongue -tied, if tongue tied is your major and trouble magnet is one minor, what would your second minor be? I... Go, ahead. go ahead. No, you go ahead. Oh, I was going to say I'm pretty open to ideas. Um, uh, I'm, I'm interested. I, I'd be down to like take one, like doing something like anemic as a minor or something would certainly like be an option but i feel like that's just sort of like doubling down on the character i've already established and what i'd be about, interested in one that would like take me in a add a new element you know what about can't swim <laughs> i kind of like that um and, and like the concept could be like either that you're weighed you're always so weighed down by the things that you're carrying with you or you just never learned it doesn't come up a lot but when it does come up it sucks i like the idea that i just like <laughs> panic in water <laughs> Yeah. I, what about uh, what about lion eyes? You know what? I thought about that one too. That is, that cool. but that one kind. Let's see. Uh, that, that one that kind of combos with um, tongue tied. Actually, it, it does. It gives you a minus one penalty to intimidation and persuasion. <laughs> that's that's like build your own big mouth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, essentially, that would give you a minus two to intimidation and persuasion. But it would um, be when I'm lying about things. When you are yes, when you are lying. Um, I do. Even, even little lies. And it also gives you a minus one to gambling rolls if you're trying to bluff. Yeah, I do like that. I, I wonder if it would feel too like oppressive to like not be able to do any of this thing. I mean, as we have found, uh, even a minus one um, penalty from fatigue can be pretty, pretty uh, like devastating. Um, mm -hmm. so, so setting yourself up for a minus two to social, but it's not every social role, just when you're lying. But like, no matter what character I play, I'm gonna want to lie about stuff. Well, and that's fine. This just that just means this character won't be any good at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can still do it as much as you want. You're just not gonna succeed very often with it. Another option could be mild mannered. I don't. I don't want that one. That would give you a straight up minus three to intimidation roll. <laughs> <laughs> well, but because I, I I think mild mannered like could work, but I still imagine him as being like. Like if anything, he he talks too much, but just like stumbles over his words sometimes. Um, I, I wouldn't say he talks like I, that's not what I want to go for it. But but I, I don't want him to be. He's not withdrawing, you know. You could give him. Um, you mentioned quirk, and I know you wanted to keep him relatively normal to start out with. But you could have a quirk that he, I know you mentioned, like talking to that animatronic or or things like that. Like you. 
you uh, maybe talking maybe, to it like it's a person. Yeah, uh, that could be a fun quirk to play around with. Sure, I, I'm going to do that anyway. <laughs> the question is, does oh, it I need see. a hindrance? I see. Um, any of those jumping out? God, I don't know. Lion eyes feels right, but it does just feel like a lot. It definitely would be a lot. Um, uh, we'd also. What else did we talk about? Can't swim. Um, do, are, are there any that's like a little more off the beaten path of like what my character's already been established as that could be interesting? <clears throat> as a minor hindrance. Um, let's see. Cautious. Enemy. Cautious. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. Something like enemy. <laughs> um, you, you, there's a rival uh, toy maker that you. <laughs> Are constantly <laughs> buying for. Well, let's see, though. Oh God! What this if? What be, if? Um, this would be minor, though. So let's just, see right. what the minor enemy is. Um, no a, a minor enemy might be a lone gunslinger out for vengeance, or a betrayed brotherhood that's deadly but appears rarely. A major enemy might represent powerful authorities, a band of outlaws, or a single very powerful and relentless rival. What if? Okay. All right. This is a little crazy. But you know FAO Schwartz? I'm familiar with it. It's mm -hmm. like the big toy store in New York. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was founded in 1862. Okay. Um, which, well, so what, what year would this be taking place? 1884. 1884. So what if uh, Frederick August Otto Schwartz is a mad scientist toy maker who like I used to work for and hates me now. <laughs> oh, okay. That's great. I mean, we'd be taking a real world historical figure and adding like a deadlandsification to him. <laughs> well, that actually brings uh, up an interest, like that could be fun. Also, there is a new edge for mad scientists called Ironbound that basically mm -hmm. bakes into your background that you studied under or worked with like some major organization and you start out with $2,000 worth of infernal devices uh, ooh, to ooh. your name. And you mm. also get to, you, you get to capitalize on the fact that like, oh, hey, I used to work for FAO Schwartz or, or whatever, <laughs> um, which can get you bonuses in certain situations. Um, I that could be like interesting, that. and it also be it, it starts you off with an armory, uh, essentially. Like of of, you wouldn't have to use it on weapons. There's so many weird infernal devices in there, like the periscope hat and things like that. <laughs> sure, you could, you could start off just like with this like like a uh, bag of like tricks essentially with that much money, um, and that would kind of feed into that enemy background too. I, I think. I think that would be kind of funny. And I, I, I like having like actual, like, cause doesn't it sort of make sense that like, well, let me see. I don't know if the guy was actually. Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll make him whatever he needs to be for this to work. <laughs> it's alternate history after all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me, let me look at his thing. Uh, are you looking up FAO Schwartz? Yeah, I'm wondering if he is just like was a businessman or if. While you look at that, I'm gonna jump back to Garav real quick. Okay. Um, Hello, Garav. Did yeah. you uh, figure out your advances? Uh, yeah, I'm still working on it a little bit, but I I think I got the major ones. So I'm gonna increase my spirit to a D8 uh, as my attribute die type. Okay. Um, uh, I was I'm kind of stuck between the edges because there's some cool ones in Deadlands. So High Roller is a good one for, oh no, I can't take High Roller, sorry. Uh, Wheatley Blood is the other one I was looking at. Ooh, Wait, Wheatley Blood is, Wheatley Blood. that one is an involved one. Yeah. yeah, and I think that might be too involved for a character who already has a lot, so. It also you know, is gonna make you, since you're male especially, uh, female Wheatleys have the option to be either weird looking or like, otherworldly alluring males are only weird looking <laughs> um so um, okay. it, it would give you some sort of like weird uh mutation of uh, some kind like um you remember the wraith had six fingers right uh, that kind of thing um okay but, then... but the other huckster edges are really good however so you have to make a decision here um, just as far as like your character goes, do you want to focus on the magical aspect of your character or do you want to be a shootist 
who augments his abilities with uh, with the magical aspects of things because that'll kind of change where you focus your advancement because there's the shooting track um, where you can kind of get a lot of those great like duelist fan the hammer quick draw kind of edges and mm -hmm. then there's the the power edges related to hucksters and other arcane backgrounds um, I think I'll probably go shootist because taking the hex slinging edge gives you most of those powers that you'll be using anyways. So I think it makes more sense. So it, it doesn't actually. Oh, it doesn't. Um, let me double check this. This was a thing. Uh, this was this was one thing. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I got an editing credit on uh, on Deadlands <laughs> because of this. Um, so it doesn't give you those those powers. Um, it, it says, uh, once complete, any Hexlinger can use that weapon to cast any of the following powers, assuming that they have them. Um, so you actually oh. have to take those powers, and then those are the powers you can use um, with your Hex gun without taking a multi-action penalty. Oh, but can, I can use them with a multi-action penalty before, or no? Yes. So oh. you can already use those powers. So uh, having the hex slinging gun essentially gives you the ability to cast those select powers way more easily without incurring penalties. Okay. I, I assume I can't take those powers until my next advance, though. Well, no. So you would start... Those are all powers you have access to as a huckster, except for um, ammo whammy. So ammo whammy you do actually gain as a power when you take hex slinging. Okay. But the rest of the ones that it mentions, um, you can only get that benefit if you already know that power or you learn it later on. But I believe the rest of those powers are on the uh, Huckster spell list. Okay. So basically, to get those powers and do the multi, without the multi-action penalty, I need to do what? Uh, so, Build a gun? Uh... Okay, so so wait. So first, what you would do as a huckster, you get access to three powers. So let's say you took as those powers um, deflection, boost shooting, and protection, which are the right. hexslinger powers other than ammo whammy. That makes then, sense. Then when you took hexslinger at seasoned rank, you would learn ammo whammy and create your rune gun. Um, so at that point, you would have every uh, power that you could cast uh, without a multi-action penalty with your hexslinging gun. Um, at the beginning of the game. Okay. So, but you're saying I shouldn't go down the shootest track after that? No, no, I'm, I'm saying definitely you, you uh, should if you want to. Um, I'm just saying me mechanically, as far as like building your character, that's, that's how the Hexlinger edge works. Okay. You don't have to have any of those powers. It could just be that you just use ammo whammy as the power that you can cast for free. Um, because you gain that with the Hexlinger Edge. No, that I mean, I like having those powers and being able to do a lot with them, so I think I'll go that route. Okay, so then you would take Huckster, which you already did. Um, right. You would choose as your three powers, Deflection, Boost, Shooting, and Protection. Right. And then once you get to Seasoned Rank, you would take Hexlinger, which would give you Ammo Whammy. Right. Um, so now I'm basically deciding uh, the a couple skills to up, which I think I, I'll figure out. But okay. I want one more edge, which I think I was going to do uh, maybe trademark weapon, or is that kind of covered by talisman a little bit? No, no. Talisman just gives you penalties if you, are, uh, if you don't have that weapon. It doesn't give you bonuses for using it. Right. I, but the thing is, I, I don't think I take trademark weapon unless it was a trademark weapon that then I then put the runes on. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I get this before I become a hexlinger. But this is all like when you're at character creation, so it's okay if it all kind of comes oh. a little bit out of order. Okay. While you're figuring that stuff out, did you figure out some stuff about FAO Schwartz, JP? Uh, well, you know what? I, I don't care. It seems like he was mostly a businessman, but I, I think in, <laughs> you know what? We can change a little bit of the lore of this world. And I, I actually, really, really. I like the idea of FAO Schwartz kind of having his own sort of like small scale, like it's not Smith and Robards, it's not Hellstrom Industries. It's, we make toys largely. Yeah. We're FAO Schwartz, but we use new science to do it. And like- It's a toy store. And in real life, it was, it existed at the time. It had mm -hmm. already like founded in Baltimore and it had moved to New York. And it's the oldest toy store in the United States. And I think that that like kind of fits, right? Yeah, and taking enemy um, uh, allows you not to have necessarily FAO Schwartz as the guy who's following you around, but people dispatched by FAO Schwartz uh, that keep coming after you, essentially. <laughs> and I, I, I like the idea that there's like rivalry within like toy makers. I and actually, I, also... I really like that concept. 
What if- <laughs> I also like that my character, who's like mostly kind of like, ah, yeah, like excited about stuff, is probably like Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> one of one of the minions Schwartz. of FAO Schwartz could be Jeffrey Toyserus. <laughs> All right. Very yeah. long necked individual. I yeah. think I froze. A bit unsettling. You you're fine. You're, you're back now. I'm back. Okay, great. Um, okay, so do you want to stick with enemy? Yeah, I, I want to do it. I do it. I just I, like the idea too much to, I dig it. to not do that. Okay. So um it looks like for your um arcane background of mad science, uh there's quite a few prerequisites for that. You have to have a smarts of D eight or higher. Um, okay. You have to have a D6 or higher in the science skill, and you have to have a D4 or higher in the weird science skill. Uh, say those again. Uh, smarts of D8, science of D6, and weird science of D4 are the floors. Okay. Um, um, so, uh, do you want to do the one attribute, uh, increase one edge root? Do you want to do two edges, two attribute increases? How do you want to play it? Let's start by doing one attribute, one edge. Okay. And let's see how that works. Worst case scenario, I might go two, go two edges. Okay. So okay. I assume one will be arcane background mad science. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's got to be one. And then what was yeah. the other one you were talking about? Um, Ironbound is a mad science edge. So I'll just, it, it only requires novice and that you're a mad science. What, where, um, is, is that in one of the companions is, or something? It's in the Deadlands PDF, but I'll, I'll just, I can just read you what it, what it does real quick. I have the um, Deadlands PDF up. Oh, okay. Uh, it is on page 69. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> I mean, come on guys. Um, essentially, you manage to leave your former employer with some of the equipment you worked on, and you still have a few friends who can cut you a special deal when you're in a pinch. So you, you start with up to $2,000 in infernal devices or vehicles, and then maybe, you... Re sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, maybe we like started out as like partners in a thing, and I feel he like ousted me somehow. Sure. <laughs> or like stole your designs and used them to catapult himself to success. Um, and then also you reduce the listed price of any future infernal devices that you purchased through that source by 25%. Mm. Um, but you can also maybe get discounts through other outlets if they uh, you know, know who you are, you can convince them that you're important. Well, it, it does feel a little, um, uh, it, it, it feels a little counter to be enemies with FAO Schwartz and his organization, but also be ironbound to them. I mean, not necessarily, because you start out with that, you could still get that discount through other sources. Uh, and it could be, ironbound leaves room for, it doesn't have to be that you were gifted these things. It could have been that you absconded with them when you, uh, when you left your position at FAO Schwartz or mm -hmm. were fired or whatever. These could be, um, you know, secret technology or secret prototypes that you stole. Um, and that's part of the reason why he's so pissed off at you. Or, or, or may, maybe stuff that he considers it having stolen, but like I think was mine by rights. Sure. All, all, of, all of that makes perfect sense with Ironbound, if that's I something that interests you. I, 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 I like it. And I don't really have any other edges that like pop to mind for me. This one, um, being a mad scientist that starts out with Ironbound gives you a lot of utility like right off the bat. Like you are geared up with infernal devices, which is which is pretty cool. When I, I like the idea that like in the carnival, I have like a lab of my own, basically. Like I, I'm provided a place where I can like tinker and, and I- uh... Yeah, we'll give you a wagon. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's so where I keep go... all my stuff. You wanna go with Ironbound then? Yeah, let's do that. I dig it. Okay, and then um, let's do your attributes. Okay, so smarts has to be a D8 at least. Yes, so that um, would be your increase if you wanted to start with everything at a D6. I think I'm willing to put um, strength at a D4. Okay. This is going to be a squish posse. I like it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a mistake. No, no, no. I think it's great because, like, again, you're, that's not – where your strength lies. You're not a hand-to-hand -hand fighter. You're a mad fucking scientist. Yeah, yeah. So let's see. So if I set everything at a D6, except for um, strength, which is a D4, mm -hmm. 
I could I could do the um you could make could something else the, a d8 or I could do smarts up to a d10 yep also true which is the the um I'm suddenly drawing a blank Megan um you know yes Adelaide that's that's the Adelaide starting stats right which one the, the everything d6 oh. strength d4 and d10 intelligence or smarts uh i think that was adelaide's you mean uh this character that's what i did i made it all d6 and then spirit and hang on, let me go back to it. no i I'm, I'm just saying that this this would be the same array that you started with in um in etu, ETU? i think maybe i don't remember um, uh, check check that check our math uh kids at home <laughs> Do so you want to do that and start with smarts so at a d10? Is smarts the like primary? Uh, so for casting in yeah. weird yeah. science is tied to smarts. Yeah, well, let's do it. I think I'm smart. Okay. Oh, is that? It looks like that's too much. Uh, well, oh. so you have to factor in your hindrance points. So um, you lowered your strength to d4, and then you raised your smarts twice. Yeah, I, I actually, I was doing it in Savage US and I forgot to do the thing right. It's helpful. It gives you those reminders. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got that um, and we've got your edges. So uh, what skills? Well, wait, and now it's saying I still have, I still have points to spend. Why is that? So you have agility D6, spirit D6, strength D4, vigor D6, and smarts D10? Yeah. Did you put all of your hindrance points into attribute increases on Savage US? No, I put add an edge and raise an attribute. Well, I don't know, but I think it might be confused. So let's just- I think it we'll, might also be. We'll go with the D10 for right now. I might need to reload. Um, so okay. let's look at your skills. Actually, yeah, I, I think it's working now. Okay. I just switched to some pages and the thing went away for some reason. It does that sometimes. Mm. Okay, so um, what skills do you want to do? Okay, so I'm required to have mad science, or I, I need science at D6, so let's start it there. Yeah. Um, I need weird science at a D4. Mm -hmm. So now I have uh, nine points to spend. Um, do I need spell casting? No, no, weird science is your Is, is your my skill. spell casting, mm -hmm. okay, uh, cool. Um, let me see. So let's, let's raise weird science to a D8. Okay. Um, and I'm going to do science to a D8 too. Okay. Um, let's do repair. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty crucial one. Yeah. Uh, maybe to a D6. Yeah, because if your if your devices break or you crit fail and they explode, you do have to um, be able to repair them in order to uh, continue to use them. So that's definitely good to have. Um, maybe notice to a D six. That's kind of useful. Um, Shooting might be important if you're going to yes. have any ranged um, weird science devices. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I, I should I should have shooting. So let's put shooting to a D six. And then even though I'm bad at it, I want to put perform persuasion to a D6. Okay. Maybe. Sure. Um, and that, that evens it out. Is there anything it feels like I'm missing? I'm pretty heavy on some of my skills. And... Um, let's see. Um, I mean, notice you're keeping it at a D4. D6. I put it D6. in D6. Oh, you put a point in. Okay. Um, and then repair. Yeah, I mean, honestly... That seems pretty good. Yeah. Uh, you're definitely more uh, academically and uh, mechanically focused than you are physical, which makes sense. Um, which, which is how I want the character to be. And I, I can shore up some of those weaknesses as it goes on. But I also kind of like the idea that, like, as a mad scientist, if he wants to shore up weaknesses, he works on building things to fix it. Exactly, which you can do, because the mad science uh, spell list is similarly very, very deep. So... Um, let's, so you get two powers to start with and 15 power points. Okay. But let's go ahead and say, um, that we're going to take summon ally as one of your powers. 
Sure. But I'm going to work with you individually to figure out a way to customize that power to kind of work for your, um, your animatronic companion. Okay. Um, and then you can pick one other power of whatever you want. You don't have to pick it right now. We can, like I said, we can make that part of your gear um, stuff and we'll just, we'll yeah. do that later on. Let's, let's take time on that because I, I'm probably going to need to look through options for the iron bound stuff too. Yeah, so. there's a lot. So that'll, that'll take some time. Um, okay. So having said all that, I think the only remaining thing we need to do is name this guy. So I want his first name to be Midas because I read a book where a character's first name was Midas and I really liked it. Okay, so Midas. Um, and then I thought Midas Buchanan, maybe. It's a pretty cool name. I'm, I'm down with Midas Buchanan. Midas name. Tooch. <laughs> Midas Tooch. <laughs> Midas Tooch. T-O-O-C-H. Mm -hmm. uh, do you like Midas Buchanan? You want to pull the trigger on that one? I'm fine with Midas Buchanan. That's, Midas that's kind Buchanan. Of, that's the name that I was going to use on either of my characters. So. Well, then there you go. Uh, I see you did a little worksheet work as well then. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. So Midas Buchanan, Mad Science. Uh, I think we've got all of that stuff. Um, everybody's going to need to buy their gear, which we'll do separately, and like finalize their spell lists if you're arcane, which we'll do separately. Um, so any last things about Midas? I, th I think that's that's enough to go on for now. Okay. Um, I, I'm, then... I'm really glad somebody mentioned enemy because uh, oh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm very excited about that idea now. I, I, I am similarly excited about that. In fact, all of you are coming up with really, really cool stuff for this. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, Garav, I believe uh -huh. we have one um, existent uh, point of business to cover with you. Have you finished all of your advances? Yes, I have done it all. Okay, so while I find this table, tell us what your advances are. Uh, so my advances were, uh, my first one was making my spirit to a D8. So now I have a spirit of D8 and an agility of D8. Uh, then I raised two skills, spell casting and athletics, both to a D6. Um, I got quick as an edge for my novice. Um, and then I got to Seasoned, which I had to take Hexlinging, so that's my last one. Did you look at Quick Draw? Quick Draw the Edge? Yeah. Quick Draw the Edge um, is different in the new edition of Deadlands, and it's pretty powerful. Hold on. Um, <laughs> essentially, it gives you a plus two anytime you're trying to interrupt someone else's action, or when you're resisting having your action interrupted, and when you spend a Benny to get a new card, you get given two cards and you can choose um, either one. Uh, I had it in Lawless. Did I say quick? I meant quick draw, because it sounds cool as shit. <laughs> quick draw is pretty cool. Mm. Qu quick is also useful and might be a good one to take um, down the line, but quick, no. draws, quick draw is pretty awesome. Yeah, this is so, great. I will say, if you want to save that, if you don't care about getting the ac additional action cards, um, you can get a quick draw holster, which gives you still gives you the plus two to interrupt, but it doesn't give you any action cards. Oh, interesting. So some gear can actually do, hmm. I, I, does a quick draw holster give you the plus two or is it a plus one? It's a plus two, I think. It's plus just, two? Okay. Yeah. Is that, is that in the same book? It. Yes. Yeah, it would be in the uh, gear. I mean, if I can afford that from the get go, I'll just get it because I'm, I'm literally a showman gun shooter. Do you know what page it's on, Dom? Although I think they would stack. I, yes, it's on page uh, 27. They wouldn't stack. Yeah. That'd be Why ridiculous. Why not? Uh, because no one should be yeah, that powerful. Uh, I'm gonna, I guess I'll stick with quick then because this kind of does that. Wait, okay, uh, so you're gonna do quick and then we'll get you a holster as part of your gear. Okay. Yeah, quick uh, was the only one that I saw that was like, I, I, I also thought about trademark weapon, but like I said, like, would it be a gun that I then I put runes on? So I might, I might, I'll, I'll think a little more about it and I might well, go back and forth on it. But. You are all like, as a hexlinger, you already have to have a gun that you put runes on. Um, right. So, so making it your trademark weapon could also make sense, but you can make that decision later on. Yeah, yeah, I might, I might. I'll, I'll get back to it, but I think quick makes sense as being a showman. Okay, so um, are you ready then? Your character is completed? Yes. Cool. This is the table for those power hungry dudes who bit off more than they can chew. Don't forget to cackle with glee when you read the result, Marshall. In some cases, <laughs> you may want to keep it a secret until the time is right to reveal it to the player, which I guess we'll discover. Okay. <laughs> Um, if the result gives, if a result gives the buckaroo a hindrance he already has, increase a minor version to the major version. 
If he already has the major version, draw again. Okay. 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 So you were just oh going to draw one card. Or I'm going to draw it for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, we'll see what you get. Are you ready? Sounds good. I'm so ready. Yeah. Okay. I, do you want me to draw it from the top of the deck, somewhere in the middle, from the bottom, or do you want me to riffle and you tell me when to stop? Uh, just give me the seventh card from the top. Seventh card from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, would you like to change this? No. No cost of Benny. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. Always. It'll cost a finger. You got a jack. Okay, of diamonds. I don't know if that matters, but... Uh, you are infected. Okay. The last creature this ombre tussled with left a mark that won't go away. The hero has an injury that gives him the Aelin Minor Hindrance. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. Two of us are sick. <laughs> yeah, but yours um, came from a wound of some kind that hasn't healed or has, in, has uh, poisoned or diseased you in some way. So... Oh boy. Um, I will, I'll work with you to try and figure out what exactly that was. But yeah, just, just like the other Aelin hindrance, you too have the, uh, now have the potential to uh, upgrade that to major. And then once it gets upgraded to major, to just die outright. Oh, cool, cool, Damn. cool. So, uh, hey, but that's, that's, the way, that's the way the cards fall. You know, it could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse. That's um, true. But that one's still pretty bad. All right. Interesting. I am. Uh, I'm really liking the way this new posse is shaping up, folks, and uh, I am excited to take this information now and finish building out the rest of the carnival, and then I will work with each of you to figure out your place in that carnival. I think I figured more specific direction I want to focus her on. I want her to utilize. I want to go really old school, which, and essentially everything she does is just freaks people out. I want her powers to be freaky, weird, like the kind of witch stuff movies you don't like to watch, Jordan. Cool. Um, body, <laughs> body horror magic. Got oh, it. No. Yeah. And I was thinking instead of maybe her running away, maybe she's an arm of her family who's gone to America to, in her heroic sense, try and deal with the whatever, because they would know about all the things going on, you know, very sure. misguided attempt, but. Okay. I, I take I take this as an indication that you will probably at some point be taking the transform power available to witches. All of the horrible powers that exist. Okay, cool. That one is just a page and a half of description and most of it's gross, so fun. Yes. Also, <laughs> I did decide on a familiar, because I took a quiz, <laughs> what familiar I should have, and it was a raven. Cool. A raven, okay. I like I that like visual. That. Also, right. a call back to ETU. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's true. Yeah. So, um, unless anyone else has anything that they want to bring up, then I believe we have a new posse built out here. We have Buster Buzz Callahan, the singing cowboy, former trick shootist. We have uh, Celestina Moldovanu, the uh, the black magic witch. We have uh, Victor Parrish, the uh, infected Hexlinger. And we have Midas Buchanan, the toy maker mad scientist. Um, I, think, I think this is gonna be a lot of fun, guys. Yeah, I seems am, good. Uh, I'm looking forward to, mm -hmm. to putting all this together. This, this definitely is, is um, shaping up to have sort of a, uh, uh, well, I, not that our old posse wasn't colorful, but this has kind of uh, a... Oh yeah. No, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, old posse was colorful. These guys are coming in like an abstract piece of artwork. <laughs> uh, so, so what a group of motley weirdos we uh, have. Are, this is going to be we, fun. Are we doing bonds now? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, let's cool, cool. talk about um, the way you guys are connected um, before we finish up here. So I had a couple ideas. Okay. Um, uh, I her show. I don't know. Maybe some kind of magic show. But I was thinking potentially. Um, Dom, your character could like do the music for the show uh, and also potentially since using her magic is like a huge risk and it's probably not something she would do for every single show, maybe she works with JP, your character, to um, you create things and we kind of together make it look like magic. Um, I, I like that idea because that's that's like sort of how I, I imagine my like role in the carnival sort of being like if you guys need stuff to like add flash to what you're doing I'll like make a machine that 
does smoke and lights or something yeah. and yeah like all of that kind of stuff um i mean we probably like mix a lot of these things in general but those mm-hmm. were just some ideas beyond that i don't know <laughs> that was just my first idea anything else hmm. jump out from anybody listening to the characters and knowing what you've got like for connections between well i i definitely see a mentor mentee connection with uh Garav's character uh i i'm no longer young that's fine um uh, how I'm, old are you i'm like older yeah, than you now i'm i'm oh. thinking like like almost maybe 40 something oh wow okay because like he's a veteran of the weird west so he's been around for a while so it doesn't well, actually maybe... ne- necessarily mean he's been around for a while it could it it more indicates that like maybe the way that you gained your hexling uh knowledge is by exploring some of the weird places of the west but it doesn't have to be like what that means is like you're a veteran of the weird crap that happens in the west not necessarily you've like lived out in it for like years and years and years also like age in the weird west is way different than age now like okay most people were living adult lives by the time they were 19 20 like there are generals in the civil war that were 20 years old so uh okay well let me let me hear what you were saying then dom yeah go on um, I, I mean, I, I don't want to dissuade you from what, no, no, no. what your vision for the character, but I was just going to say that I, I could have been training you or I, I took over, like you joined the carnival um, after I got ousted from my, uh, my place in there. And I was instructed to basically see what you had and tell you the tricks that we normally do and start teaching you kind of the, the, the stuff. And I found you to be naturally gifted in it, but maybe a little bit of a hothead or something. Yeah, um, I, but, I, like uh, that. I like that idea yeah. too. And honestly, me being older than you could be a weird and fun dynamic to play with too. But of me being someone like, why is this young person teaching me how to do my job? I know how to shoot. And you're like, yeah, right. yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Listen yeah. to me. I, I kind of yeah. like that idea too. You know how to shoot. You don't know how to shoot like we do. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of like, if you guys have this sort of like, friendly antagonistic relationship too since you have that jealousy aspect to your oh yes yeah um that could be like like um this this desire to like keep reminding him like yeah but this isn't what you do anymore it's my thing yeah Um, or or that that. kind of stuff that could kind of like um be a a, a murkier aspect to that uh that teacher student sort of thing he keeps calling me kid every time he's training me and i'm like i'm older than you man stop (laughs) (laughs) cool Um, yeah i love it let's do that so just uh, uh, an- another, I-, I know we're just making X bond go on here, but I had another idea just in the bond between my character and or a like bond between my character and Megan's character, which is that, so you do like fortune telling stuff too, right? Yeah, I think she probably, I don't know if she's actually adept at it, but she does it. But you do like carnival style fortune telling, mm-hmm. like maybe tarot or magic, like, I think my character might like really like having his fortune told. Like he he kind of knows it's like superstition, but he's still just like, I don't know. I, I've I've had a bad day. Could you just do the tarot? Just <laughs> I just want to see what comes out of it. Real <laughs> nervous about what tomorrow's gonna bring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be good. Uh... Also, essentially, if like you were saying, Megan, um, the tarot or or whatever fortune telling you do is sort of like your made up fake performance thing. So there's actually no real magic or ability to that whatsoever, but he's just like really into getting his fortune told. Well, at least not at first, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know, I, I have, a, I'm a, I don't entirely know outside of, of some of this stuff, other bonds. Cause I, I, think, I, I think of this character as being kind of irreverent in the sense that, you know, she like creates this show and this whole thing. And then, um, you know, behind that, it's kind of like, whatever. But she also, I don't know, I'm having a hard time quantifying all these elements that are in my head into a space. So it's hard to figure out what the bonds are. Why don't we do this? I like the stuff we've said so far. Um, Unless, unless anyone else has something like really pressing that they want to bring up as a bond, since we did for, for many of you create a lot of these characters whole cloth right now, 
Um, it's kind of putting everyone on the spot a little bit to come up with bonds with other characters without having the chance to really like internalize who your character is and internalize who everyone else's characters are. So um, unless anything is like really jumping to mind, like some of the things we've already talked about, we can wait on this and kind of figure some of this out uh, in, the, in the time before we start the game. Uh, yes, Garab, I, I saw your hand. Um, uh, JP, what's your character's name again? I'm sorry. Midas, Betancourt, Midas. or not, uh, not Betancourt, um, uh, Buchanan. Buchanan. <laughs> um, since Midas is good with, uh, you know, repairing things, maybe he's the one who repairs my gun and like uh, takes care of it when I need it. So that's something we could have a connection. What is kind of starting to reveal itself is that Midas is involved, is Midas is sort of like the carnival's like set, set designer, mm -hmm. um, special effects guy, and handyman, <laughs> yeah. um, mm -hmm. along with like, I, like, like I kind of feel like you're Which, like a utility worker for the that's, carnival. That's like totally what I want to. Yeah, I really that's like great. That. Cool. Um, which, which, yeah, I think that's a fun, a fun position to occupy. Um, so yeah, do you guys want to wait and like sort of like take some time to digest the, the stuff that we've come up with? Sure. So if you, and I'm still a big proponent. We don't have to like be locked down, but if exactly. we could get our hands on like those Decima cards, I think it was a really fun system to like come up with connections you didn't think about before. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We still need to look into doing that. Uh, it, and if you're would, watching, haven't heard of it, um, check into it. It would be helpful for me, I think, to wait because I just I feel like I've got a lot of different directions, and I since I haven't settled, it's it's a little confusing. So I feel like I'm saying yeah. two different things. Sure, sure. So. Yeah, so, but I like all the stuff we've already come up with. I just I, I honestly feel like my experience with characters has often been as much as I come up with like a character concept, and I do feel like that's a huge guiding thing. Relationships can be an easier thing to build character forward on. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, just because that's that's what you're playing with on the table so i so i do real i really want to like know what my relationship is with like each of you guys mm -hmm. going yeah. through it same yeah so. so we will we'll take some time we'll let this kind of settle in uh see if anything if comes up that you like want to change or tweak yeah. or anything like that and then we'll start to figure out the the bonds as we go because yeah. i also need to figure out uh with each of you how we're going to to weave you into the carnival proper which might give you some more um information in that way so Unless there's anything else that we need to do, I would say this has been a very successful uh, character creation session. Um, anything else that uh, anyone wanted to cover or ask about before we finish up? I don't think mm -hmm. so. All right. <laughs> Good. Well, then here we go. New posse, um, 1.0 at least. We'll, we'll see if any changes happen between now and then. And those of you who did take the time to watch our character creation session after seeing the first episode, maybe you have spotted some of the changes or decisions that we made. Um, or maybe we locked it all in first try and we're really, really good at this. Um, I guess only you know at this point, we do not yet. But uh, we will see you all out on the dusty desolate trails of the weird west and uh we are so very excited to share this new adventure with all of you so hopefully you will tune in for all of the madness and we will see you all very soon pew, 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 pew.